but for 14 of them it's new territory new ground and you wonder about men like johnny barnes who've been there three times with the cats twice under malcolm blight we go down and join the big dipper yeah good on you bruce and uh just excitement down here we're just waiting for the uh the big banner to go up and of course the cheer squad do a fantastic job and james Hurd is just uh leading this team out to this magnificent arena which of course jason you and i and malcolm have been up here a few times before but what a great opening that was but uh, these guys now what they want to do bruce is uh play footy and the first uh, five or ten minutes will, will show us which way this game is going to go as the crowd now starts to so we'll say to james Hurd, welcome to the mcg this is the game that we've been waiting for and you mentioned uh, michael Lodge just coming past now mark McCurry. We've got uh, Fletcher, who's had a great season. Johnny Barge, as you mentioned, Bruce, he's had a terrific season this year. Played three losing round finals, but starts with him in the middle. As the boys run through the banner, Brucey, take it away, mate. Well, as always, there's that mighty roar, isn't there? And uh, Dipper caught up with it. He played in eight finals himself. You just can't help yourself on this day. Gary Moorcroft out there and Blake Carousella. But it does take two to tango. This has been the best team. One of the best teams we've ever seen. There's no question about that. Who knows who's the best? It's subjective. But it does take two to tango. And over the last 11 weeks, this team has won 10 games. They have been fantastic, the Demons, haven't they? They have done wondrous things. It's been an extraordinary turnaround when you look back to last year where they really did struggle, winning just six matches, finishing in the 14th place. Neil Danaher came into 2000 with a young, inexperienced side and suddenly finds himself in with a chance of winning a premiership flag. Sandy, uh, Neil would still be pitching himself for I mean, the whole of Melbourne Football Club with after their disappointments of last year. This is a, is a great fight back for the season 99. And this is a great test for all the players. I mean, right now, until the start of the game, this is where they need to control their emotions. They're going to obviously get excited. They're going to soak up the atmosphere, but they can't afford to go over the top. Great shots here from inside the rooms. We saw Shane Wowoden, 22, Brownlow medalist on Monday night. No team has ever come from 14th and made it through to a grand final. I know that we've had 12 teams over much of the century, but they've come from further back than any other team to get here. It's whether they can take that giant step today and get over a colossus called the Essendon Football Club, who have been just so brilliant all year. I just wonder, Malcolm, is there more pressure on Essendon than there is in Melbourne? Oh, look, I think you're right with that. I, Essendon had two great years in a row, and I mean, to, to miss out this time would, would, would be a terrible It'd feeling. It would be criminal, Malcolm, oh, wouldn't it? It would be shocking. On the other hand, I mean, you know, they say you've got to get to one to, to feel what it tastes like to lose one, and perhaps this group, who knows what the Melbourne players are going through now. Well, Tony Lockett is down there, the man who kicked more goals than anybody else in the history of the game. David Neitz, captain for the first year, coming out onto the ground. Plaga, what a moment it is for the Demons. What a fantastic moment it is, Bruce. Yes, Melbourne, as you can see, just coming out behind me now, led by their captain, David Neitz. Melbourne haven't made the grand final since 88, so I'm sure each and every one of these players are set to play a huge part in today's game. And uh, the boys certainly look switched on. They look toey, Bruce. I bet you they do, Plugger. Yeah, but look, I can remember as a player, this was an amazing feeling to run out here, to enter the arena and to get in amongst all these people. It's just one of the memories that you'll never, ever forget as a player. And I'm sure the Melbourne Footy Club players are going to do their club very proud today. And the last one through the banner is a little bloke from Tambala, a wheat farming town in Western Australia. We know him affectionately as the Wizard, and it may just be his day. Let's go down to Hutto, and he's got Neil Danaher with him, Anthony. Thanks, Bruce. Well, Neil, the moment's arrived. Yeah, and uh, a big day, yeah. I want to take it all in. You made a tough decision with Cameron Bruce. Yeah, it was. It's always unfortunate for someone to miss out. But we wanted to go in with a side that was 100%. What were your last instructions to the boys? Uh, win the ball. <laughs> what are you expecting at the start? Uh, typical grand final, helter-skelter. So it's important that we settle down early and get up the footy. Good luck. What a family they are, the Danahers, who have been part of these two clubs, Neil at Melbourne in his third year. But Terry and Chris and Anthony were along with Neil at this great club, Essendon. So, mixed feelings here. It's all set up. It should be a wonderful day. I actually had a cry last Saturday when they ran through the banner, so I think it'll be worse this week. Just thinking of his father and what my family. I've got a big family and they're just so behind him. And, you know, it's just a dream, a dream. So, I'm just hoping he's going to be there.
go, I just want to wish you all the best. You know, all your family will be... Let's hope that he has a beauty in his first grand final. They're going for 16 grand finals and the Demons are going for their 13th, but they've had a long wait, 36 years. That's longer than Collingwood's from 58 through to 1990. What a day it is for both clubs. 2000 AFL Final Series. Ladies and gentlemen, Coca-Cola and the Australian Football League welcome you to the 2000 Grand Final. Would you please be upstanding the national anthem of Australia to be performed by Tanya Doko. Dick Reynolds, triple Brownlow medalist, coached the Bombers to... Maybe just have a little bit too much class, Bruce. Thanks, uh, Plugger. Well, Lloyd is with Ingerson, and Mark Johnson has got Farmer. Neitz is forward, and Fletcher picks him up. Wallace and Schwartz, by the look of it. I tell you what, yeah, Nicholson and James Hurd. forward. That is a very interesting matchup, isn't it, Melbourne? Did this in the first final, too, Jason. Heard early. So the Bombers go to the left, and the Demons to the right. We've been waiting a long time, but once again, the moment has arrived. It is grand final day, and here's the first bounce. And there's a mighty roar, and White gets the first up, and Wallace charges in and gets away. And Hardwick kicks it off the side, and the chase is on with Ragoni. Overruns, and there'll be some nervous players early. 35 of them haven't played in a grand final before. Ragoni's little one, wants to find Swartz, the Ox runs onto it, he's outside 50, he's inside 50, he's a chance, it's going, it won't be a goal, it's a mark by Neitz on the line. It looked as if it was going all the way. What about Jeff White jump in the first bounce? So White over the top, Schwartz an early touch, and the captain maybe to kick the first goal, look at the angle. He'll probably try a check side. He'll probably try and improve. He kicks with the left and hits the post. Well, it just wasn't in the script, was it, for the captain to kick the first goal and get the Demons away? And Malcolm, probably the key for Melbourne is to get a flying start, get two or three goals on the board. It certainly would help their cause, no doubt. Fletcher then, to bring it back into play, he's had a wonderful season for Essendon. An All-Australian player. He comes back towards Wellman. Uze is a flyer in front. Uze goes again, and it's taken to the line. We've got to throw in with the Demons, doing the early attacking. This young Travis Johnston at the end of the Melbourne bench. Big moment for him. Barnes contests, tried to take it out of the air. Schwartz, head down, bottom up. Always a good setup for Melbourne to have uh, David Schwartz do the ruck work whenever the ball's around half forward. Jeff White just sits back and kick behind play. Yeah, conversely though, Dean Wallace is standing and kick off the play too and blocking up their forward line. So it's 50-50 that, Jason. Still in Melbourne's attacking zone. Barnes again. Gets a left hand to it, but it's Schwartz who comes away. He's made a positive start. Chips oh. towards the 50, and Heffernan takes a courageous mark. Here's a young man who was brought up by his parents to follow Melbourne, and he did. So did his father, Tony. 
but now it's red and black as he kicks towards centre wing. Going to be a free kick to be taken by Blake Carousella. Almost uh, at half back, they've created a loose man. Solomon arches his back and then takes him on and gets away with strength. Kicks to half forward. Collins has got Lucas early. That's another surprising matchup. We thought Nicholson would get him. Lucas tries to get it off. Powell tries to get a quick kick away. Long getting involved. Lee and Chilly with some time. Belts it away. The bounce important. Attacking it hard. It was hard with. He keeps his nose over it. Farmer worries him out of it. Brilliant play, Farmer. He releases Green, the rookie. A good tackle from the back. But his free kick, I think, is going to Melbourne, is it? Coming back to the Demons, to Green for a push in the back, I think. This will settle him down too. A rookie. Cameron Bruce, our other rookie, missed out. Greg Green playing. A couple of early touches as we look ahead. And Green kicks to half forward, towards the targets. Had a couple of early possessions. Blumfield at half back. Kicks the ball to centre wing. He wants Heffernan. Whoa, Woden. Heffernan did really well to take the mark. He's made a good start. He's on centre wing. Drifts it in towards half forward. Carousella. The Bombers are away. They're inside 50. Barnes is at the back. Barnes can't quite take the mark. Could have almost been interfered with. A lightning tackle by James Hurd. Was it a push? No, said the umpire. Gee, that's, uh, that's an incredible fumble by Johnny Barnes. He'd snuck down the open side of the ground. He'd made space. The kick was perfect coming in from Carousel. And he just dropped the sitter. He gets another chance. We've got a bounce 20 metres out. Barnes contests. Hurd snaps. James Hurd bends it back for the Bombers. Is it enough? I think he's started the run. He has. Out. He's at centre half back for the moment. White again gets over and gets it to Powell. Good start by White to centre half forward. The punch of the back. Solomon again caught this time. May have been a bit stiff not to be got a free kick for hanging on to, and now the Bombers will get one for a high tackle. Solomon it is. Brilliant last week against the Blues. Liam Chelly's hurt himself as we look at forward for Solomon. See what's up in front. Hurd makes a long lead here, and he's going to try and get to him, and he's got him. And that's a good mark down low. He took off a long way out, and then Hurd goes to Lloyd. He got caught under it a bit. The belt away at the back from Ingerson. Drops down to Masidi. Masidi back to Lloyd. He can kick a goal. It's close. He's missed. It's 1 1 to a behind. Look good, the Bombers, early, don't they? Well, even though he kicked a point, Matthew Lloyd, it'll do his nerves wonders just getting an early touch. Having Hurd and Lloyd both get an early kick and a shot at goal just gets him into the game. Uze heads to the outer side. And it's OK. Finds Phoebe. Off to Ragoni. Ragoni has got Woe Woden running through half back. Under pressure, he gets his kick just in time towards centre wing, towards Peter Walsh. He needs support and he gets it. Up towards Schwartz. The Ox backs back into the pack. Couldn't take the mark. Robertson is waiting now, but he won't get a chance. Hardwick defends to the outer side. Only as far as McDonald. Now here's a chance for the knees of the player. And Powell streaming towards goal. He shoots. And the Demons reply. Scores level here. Demons have struck back quickly. Barnes got the run of it. Uze at the back. Quick left footer, almost a half forward. McDonald, who's handled release power a moment ago. And now Schwartz, low. Neitz got him. It's a good kick by Schwartz on the left and a positive lead from Neitz. Oh, the the centre work stuff is not real flash at the moment. The Bombers are all going for the footy. Melbourne are just peeling off and it's clearing it easily. 
Boy, wouldn't Neats like to do what Heard did at the other end here? He had the first shot at goal. It wasn't a bad attempt. He hit the post from the pocket. This would really give him some confidence. He kicked three behinds in a row last week before he settled down. He's got a good record against the Bombers. He's 40 metres out. He's hooked it a bit. Is it coming back? He's missed. I'll tell you what, David Neitz has let Dustin Fletcher off the hook early in this game. I mean, you take two marks, two shots for goal, and he is yet to punish him. So all of a sudden, he's just taking the pressure back off Dustin Fletcher, who could have thought, after a couple of minutes' time, that his opponent had a couple of goals, and it would just take that attacking frame of mind out of him. Fletcher towards Barnes. Uze flies with him, but this time Barnes holds him. That was better for Big John as he kicks up towards half forward. Mercurial late spot. Back to Lucas. Mercury is there. So to Carousella. Carousella into the open goal. Bubbles away. The Bombers sting on the rebound there, don't they? 2-1 to 1-2. On this warmish, brilliant day now with the sun shining brightly and again wide over the top. Woe Woden can't get clear. Handball by Blumfield, just missed his target. Good tackle on Heffernan. Ball comes loose to Woe Woden. Woe Woden tries to draw the man and then goes long to fall forward. Meets underneath and Mark Johnson has made a remarkable recovery from last week. Oh. Takes a chance, is hurled oh. up. Here's Powell to kick his second, and he's done it. Demons. They lead again. An exciting opening. As White wins it again out of the middle, Lynn Shelley tries to take it away. He's locked up by Heffernan and Co. I was just wondering, uh, Jeff White jumping hard here, whether in fact to throw Alessio on just for seven or eight minutes, just to get some different change up in the middle of the ground. It looks like Swart's going in there right now, Malcolm, and uh, White's going up forward. Still in the middle. Comment from Dipper on the boundary line. Barnes wins it. Ramanaskis tried to tip it forward. Now they've got a chance, the Bombers, through Mercedes' kick up towards a congested half-forward line. Demon defence will be tested. The lightning hand pass came from Long. They're not out of it yet. Blumfield tried to turn it even further forward. Hullard gets stuck. It comes back towards Jeff White. The big man lopes through half-back, tries to change direction. It comes to Schwartz, tries to get clear. He gets caught. And umpire Fred Allen comes in. Despite the protestations of Mark Mercury and Co, there will be a bounce. Had to be a free kick one way or the other. He had a, an eternity to get rid of it, and it looked like he was taken high the second time. White goes to the line. Woe Woden gets it back again. They go charging forward in towards the danger zone once more. But this time, a safe mark taken by Johnson. Poor kick by Ward. Fletcher, and they switch it up. On the burst now. Long probing kick to centre wing. Lloyd way out there. Got it, he's got some time now. Sizes it up, decides to go long. It's a poor kick, he's trying to get to Blumfield. He might reach it too. Blumfield in the pocket. He's about 50 metres from goal. Useful kick to Barnes. Barnes well done, Ingerson. Barnes is handball, brilliant. Heffern and searching for it. Can't find it. Is it still in play? Hit the post. Oh, it's a behind. It's a good start to this final. These two teams look pretty well matched up, don't they? Until at the moment. Uh, actually, interesting there with Lloyd. Engerson not going with him he up the ground. He just swept back, didn't yeah. he? He swept back, and John Barnes has made his intentions clear. He's going to push forward at every opportunity. Phoebe then to bring it back. Comes into the pocket. Matthew Collins is away. Chipping back towards Russell Robertson. Couldn't take him, but his recovery was excellent. He's got time now to have a look down towards centre wing. He needed that time because Rigoni slipped and turned it over to Solomon. Now the Bombers can start it again. Lucas, it's a wobbly old ugly punt kick up towards half forward. It might be ugly, but it was effective to Blake Carousella. White coming off the ground. Coming on with Simmons. The kick goes to half forward. And the Bombers will have another shot courtesy of Justin Blumfield. Well, for a bloke that plays predominantly as an on-baller, he is one of the best aerial threats in the game, Justin Blumfield. Often takes pack marks. Just drifting down from the wing. 
into space. The kick came in into a good position, and that's a very good leap. And Jeff White off the ground? Yep. He's not... You've got to think he's injured, surely. No, he's not, Malcolm. He's just on the uh, on the microphone uh, with uh, the coach at the moment. We'll keep an eye on that situation. In the meantime, Blumfield is shooting for goal. Anthony McDonald came off second best, too, in that encounter with his teammate in Alistair Nicholson. Sprayed it. Blumfield misses. Pressure telling early on both sides. 2-3 plays 2-2. Two -two. Yes, McDonald with Ingerson going hard at it. It's their first big miss, though, the Bombers, isn't it? The other shot or two were tough. Kick inside, OK. That's what's in uh, front of McDonald is recover. Comes wide. Finds Nicholson. Poor handball. Misses Phoebe. Wellman there. Phoebe. And then Blumfield. Still unable to get it out, so ball up. 55 metres from the Bombers' goal. They lead by a point. Simmons on. Number 46 for the Demons. Do the ruck work while White's off. And he might get a free kick against her for hanging on. The advantage is given. Everybody had stopped. Powell comes away. Bit of a mongrel kick. Swartz has been in good touch. A Beautiful guy. handball. The Green just couldn't quite get it. It may have been an inch too far or a centimetre. Hardwick belts it away. Not far. Leon Jelly misses it. Heard on the up. Gets the Mercedes. Big blue going on behind. Mercedes kicked the set of half forward. Uze came in from the side for the Demons. Walsh was there. McCurry puts on a pretty effective tackle. Ball up. They've settled down back behind it. Set of half forward for Melbourne. Gee, the chances there. The handball from Schwartz to Green. Here's uh, Wallace. Whoa. Whoa. With Green. His uh, first year, Brad Green. A little toe poke from Carousella. Play on call, not 10 metres. Barnes clever. And now McCurry. McCurry's 45 metres out to Carousella. Carousella in the pocket. He's a clever footballer. He's kicked it. What a great goal. by seven points Jeff White just having a chat with the coach is back contesting with Barnes a bit of a line ball but it'll be Essendon who take it out of the middle once again courtesy of Joe Mercedes down the half ball the lead was on from Lloyd Heard was claimed taken to the ground did he have the football Nicholson plays on gets the hand pass away now towards Walsh he goes to the outer side and Liam Chelly Liam Chelly on centre wing has a bounce Loses it, regains it, wobbles a punt to half forward. Solomon cuts it off. Comes back again in towards the centre wing. Johnson is there, lurking dangerously. Goes over the head of Long, up towards the half forward line. Big pack of players. Smash back again towards Johnson. He's got the pace to come through half forward. He goes on to the left foot, spears it in towards that position now. Collins gets caught, gets ripped to the ground. And he's been beaten. The grand final umpire last year, the All-Australian umpire last year, has pinged him. Well, he didn't have long, Collins, but when he gathered the ball and he saw Michael Long coming, he did try and evade the tackle, so that was considered prior opportunity to dispose of prior, it. I mean, you've got to be given some yeah, time, look, Jason. He's I, taken a half a step. I realise that, Malcolm, but I think the umpires decided, well, he decided to turn around and try and run away from Michael Long. Oh. It was tough, it was oh, tough, but it was a very good tackle for Michael Long. So here is the 93 Norm Smith medalist kicking for his first goal for the day from 46 metres. He misses. I won't say another word on that, Jason. <laughs> but I thought it was a fair result. John Elliott in the middle there, the uh, president of the Carlton Football Club, who were beaten by the Bombers last week. Stephen Phoebe, we can see what's in front of him here. He's going to come wide to Uze. He's oh. out. It's out on the fall. Heard will take it from about 48. Well, I will say this, Bruce, we were down on the ground earlier. There is a swirling breeze, and at times the ball will drift a little bit in the air, not favouring one end or the other. So Heard from the pocket, very short. McCurry plays on. Oh, smother was good from Collins. And then build it on by the Demons. They make it out of this. Ragoni, Wo-Woden, Ragoni in some trouble. I think leg Wo-Woden coming yeah. back. Free kick. 
couple of the Demon midfielders have looked a bit jelly-legged early in this match. Ragoni's one of them, Leoncelli another, but uh, Wawoden has settled pretty well. So Guy Ragoni at half-back. He missed a great opportunity a few minutes ago when he went to ground. And the ball was coming out of defence, up and under, but long. Schwartz and Wallace, and from the side, Blumfield, Jason talked about his ability over overhead. Uh, it is outstanding. The kick to Hurd, he's got him. Just forward of centre wing. Ramanaskis lurking dangerously. He dives and he takes the catch just outside 50. What a dream season this young man has had. Adam Ramanaskis, runner up in the Norwich, looks towards Lloyd. Doesn't find him. White is on the last line of defence. Pops it over the top to accommodate Nicholson. Nicholson gets another one now towards Daniel Ward. He looks up towards the half-back line. They're out of trouble. Up towards centre wing. Here comes David Schwartz. Gets a pretty average bounce. Would be the best description as Wallace comes over the top. Liam Kelly is there as well. And there will be a bounce on centre wing. This place can't keep up. You this think this is absolutely a hot game of footy right now. Five goals scored so far in the match. Three to the Bombers. Two to the Ds. Leoncelli tried to go through with the footy. At the bottom is James Hurd in one pack. Heffernan's in another. And it's very tight, as you would expect. And Malcolm, again, similar to when Matthew Lloyd came up the ground earlier and Ingerson swept back. James Hurd is up following the ball. And Alistair Nicholson just sitting back across the Just test back. out their fitness. Six and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Flicked out wide towards Leoncelli. Or oh, Schwartz had a fresh air shot. Solomon should be able to clear. Penetrating hand passes of beauty to Blumfield. Blumfield through the middle now to the run of Ramanaskis. Go all the way, Adam. You're the young man who can do so well. Ramanaskis, 35 metres out, takes it away to the right and disappoints the Bomber fans with a behind. And Melbourne have made a change. Johnson off and Johnson on and McDonald off. Interesting, isn't it? Blumfield and Solomon, two very good players in the air. Play well above their height really can stop the ball in the air so Johnston on Travis Johnston has come on for the Demons he's a good pinch hitter they've got away with it a bit here Melbourne because the Bombers should be three or four up by now Phoebe down the center danger again the kick outs are a problem Mercedes couldn't quite take the mark Walsh Lucas Oops. comes through he's got some length he's hooked it though so we're up to three six to two two one of the problems is, Bruce, I feel, is that the Melbourne half forward line and centre line have really pushed down for these kickoffs and brought their Essendon defenders with them. So you've got a lot of players in that zone, three more than normal. Gurgic on. And Robertson off there, Bruce. Russell Robertson having a spell. Phoebe again. The Bombers not taking advantage of their opportunities. Nine effective scoring shots, and they've booted just the three goals. Phoebe grabs every centimetre he possibly can towards White. Gets it off to Wowoden. Shane Wowoden kicks them up towards half four. The goal here would be an absolute bonus. Hard wick defence for the Bombers, but he overruns it. Almost runs into the wizard. He gets the hand pass away, Farmer. Back towards Green. Beautiful control. Flicks it with the left foot high in towards full forward. Wallace with strength gets a hand to it and it's flicked over the line. One behind conceded. No love lost between those two, David Schwartz and Dean Wallace. And they just, uh, David Leeds and David Schwartz have just swapped positions at the moment. Just alternating between full forward and centre half forward. Back to Fletcher. And we have a blood rule against David Schwartz. not in a hurry to get off the ground like <laughs> David he's not particularly pleased at the moment he's had a go at two of the umpires already on the way off I think he's a little bit disappointed at not getting a free kick conditions as we speak becoming decidedly overcast still very good conditions though as their recent record certainly weighs heavily with the Bombers seven to three in their past ten so Schwartz is off. Troy Simmons back out onto the ground. It's been interesting in the midfield for Melbourne. They've had Uze, Ragoni, Leon, Chelly, Powell and Way Woden. Five of them already through there. I've just been trying to follow up those matchups, but they're happening so well, quickly. Leon Chelly's going with Mercedes. Ramanas is st starting on a wing and then going to Uze. Ragoni starting on a wing and then going to Jason Johnson. And Woden and Heffernan going head-to-head -head at this stage, Malcolm. 
but good luck keeping up with it all in the middle. Roman's kick to the line. Saw a moment ago that the Demons have only won nine first quarters this year. So uh, they're within nine points early. The Bombers have been fast starters. They've been very fast in every quarter, to be truthful. They've been outstanding. Neats out of the air to half forward. Green went to ground. Simmons has just come onto the ground. Fletcher Ooh. Green was terrific. Front on tackle. And then Gertz That's getting silly. involved. That's silly. And it's on now. Coming in late with the balls all over and giving away a free kick. It just relieves the pressure. He's giving it away. That is silly. So uh, Gergic giving the free kick away. Hardwick squares it to Wellman and Wellman out wide. Solomon at half back. He's been good early, Dean Solomon. Oh. He's had half a dozen possessions already. He's got Johnson outside of him. That's Mark Johnson. Decides to deliver to Lucas. Collins at the back. White, McCurry. Ball loose. Carousel has been dangerous. Misses Lucas. Mercedes kept his head over. McCurry's quick hands to Long. Long oh, brilliant. Ah. Wonderful start to McCurry. The ball. McCurry's gone. Terrific tackle. Not pink. Lloyd's going to kick a goal. And he does. It's a goal to Lloyd. Well, what's the difference between that and Collins? I know it was different. It had a, a heap of chances, McCurry. I think well, he handballed it away, Bruce. Yeah, I, think we, need, yeah. I think we need to wait and look at the replay. Oh, yeah, I think you'll find it. his handball. Don't watch How good thing. was Michael Long oh, in the oh, yeah. Sensation. Now, he runs around the player, has a bounce, yep. gets He's tackled. Does he handball it? Yes, yeah. with open hand, though. Open Ooh. hand. Ooh. Pretty hard to pick that up, though. Oh, they got a great goal anyway. Grant doesn't like it. <laughs> Didn't get fist of all, boys. Schwartz back on. The crowd seeing the replay, not happy, especially in the Melbourne members area. 4-6 plays 2-3. Wo Woden out of the middle. Can the Demons reply? With just under four minutes remaining, kicks up towards the forward line. Hardwick was a fly, but he couldn't take the mark. Solomon's been good. Meets tries to keep it back in play. He gives it over the back. Here's a chance for the reply, and they get it straight away from Green. The youngsters done it again. Three to two in the Demons favour out of the centre square in the opening term. Four, six, three, three. So Melbourne right there with the Bombers. It's been an outstanding opening quarter. Barnes just took White's to run there. He's a bit lucky. The handball away by Hurd to Blumfield. Blumfield out wide. Kicks to centre wing. Well done by Uze Ramanauskas. Hurd was brilliant. Little kick over the top. Barnes and White. Barnes has got Ramanauskas. He's got him. He's about 80 metres from goal. Beautiful yeah. kick to Lloyd. Just had to wait. At the bottom, Jason Johnson has missed it. It was a classic build-up. They have been a little bit wasteful early, Essendon. They? They've had the chance. They've had 11 scoring shots to six. And they only lead by 10 points. They've had a lot of it, haven't they? And I reckon the Demons will be pretty happy at the moment. They're within two goals and going all right. Well, Jeff White's going all right. There's a few others that aren't, Bruce. I mean, some of his taps to get it down forward quickly have been outstanding. And that's the, really their three goals. He can't do that all day. Ragoni this time brings it back into play. Heads to the outer side. Lucas, a bleak fire from the back, can't take it. Waiting down, however, is Walt. He's away for Melbourne in towards Powell. Powell's already kicked a couple of telling goals. Chips in towards Schwartz. Out he comes. He's in front of Wallace. He takes him to the ground. Wallace is first to recover. Little chip back was dangerous. It was meant for Johnson. But watch out because the Wizard and Green are both lurking in that vicinity. Jason Gitt, that's silly. Given away a couple of very, very costly free picks in the scoring zone. Michael Long takes it down the back pocket. Ragoni's having a spell. McDonald is back on. And Michael Long bounces his way out of defence, sets it up for Sean Wellman. Wellman goes inboard to accommodate Blumfield. Justin Blumfield looks towards the half forward line. Melbourne have the numbers. Smash back inboards towards Travis Johnston. The lightly framed Johnston goes again and is going to get a free pick. Uze's the player came off there, Sammy, not Rigoni, Uze. Thanks, Dipper. Uze off and McDonald on. The quick change is Daniel Ward. 
chips in towards the centre. He's got Boy Woden again, starting to pick up possessions now. The Brownlow medals. Michael Long at the back comes over the top of Liam Telly. James Hurd was in front, and he's going to get the free kick. Quickly goes on to Barnes. Under two minutes remaining for the quarter. Barnes puts the Bombers inside 50 once again. Use of the body, illegal against Lucas. A bit of sloppy work at both forward lines at the moment. It's just not flowing like it did earlier. I reckon some of these guys are actually looking for a bit of a rest. It's been a frenetic pace. Ward got it from Nicholson, switches it up for McDonald. Good kick, and he ran really hard for him. Well, Woden's on the burst. He's brought down McDonald. The kick to space, Woden, well, and now Walsh leading the way. Can he get it to Neitz? Fletcher's cut it off. Still in play. Clever handball to Solomon. Solomon at half back. Goes long to half forward. Blumfield front spot. Johnston at the back. Still with Johnston. Kicks to half forward. Meets the target. Oh, oh. Wallace has taken one of the best marks of his career. <laughs> he has taken a screamer. No one on the mark. Could be in his last game of footy. Who knows? High wants Mercurial Blumfield. Oh, he's no mark pay. Lucas. Lucas has got the run of it. He's on his wrong side. He shrugs the tackle. Comes back. Mercini goes for it. Lloyd's on his own. And they miss a chance. Gee, they've had some chances. They're 4-8. They were 3-2 at one stage, I think. They've kicked 1-6 since that point. Not a lot of set shots, though, Bruce. A lot of it's been in general play. So in general play out wide, points will generally come anyhow. Phoebe to Wawoda. Back to Phoebe. Back to Wawoda. That's one way of picking up possession. Wider to Johnston. Travis is clear. But the kick, well, in the end, it may work out all right. It does. They've got the runners. Here's Ragoni on the end of the hand pass. Goes back once again towards Walt. Inside 50. Loose it up to Ramanaskis. And the Bombers will clear. Look out. Look and it out. could be costly. Blake Carousella with only seconds remaining. The top might beat them. He needs a mark for Hurd. He won't get it in time. And James Hurd has the last touch of the quarter, but all to no avail. So, uh, we'll let you know what happens there. So, Green down in the rooms as we start the second quarter of the grand final here with the Bombers leading by 11 points. White, Masiti, out wide. Attacking up Ward, just right over Renner. Mercury quick to get back. Ward did really well to get back and put some pressure. Ramanauskas, back turn. Ward's low handball was very effective to Collins at half back. The handball in board to Lee and Jelly. Arches his back as he so often does and then kicks to half forward waywardly. Fletcher misses it, dropped it, and the Demons could be in. Ragoni rushes the kick to full forward. Schwartz is in the box seat. Wallace did really well. Built it in the way to the line. Tell you what, it's interesting. You can also see Adam Uze starting down out of the goal square. He got taken off in the first quarter as a midfielder couldn't get into the game and they decided to start him around the feet of David Schwartz and he's being attended to by Damien Hardwick. Buick and Long still waiting on the interchange. An uncustomary error from Dustin Fletcher and in the danger oh. zone. Slap and well smothered. Here he goes, the wizard. Takes it out of the court. He's done well so far, Mark Johnson. He'd be pretty pleased knowing that yeah. Farmer hasn't had a shot for goal yet. Yeah, he's done a couple of good things though, yep. Farmer. And we know that he can explode at any time. Just making sure that he doesn't uh, play onto the open side. That was good play by Jeff Farmer. He kicks to the outer side. Big pack of players. Ward couldn't pick it up. They go again. Johnson comes out the back door. The Bombers may get a chance through Carousella. Then again, Waltz might have other ideas. Off to Powell. Had a pretty good first quarter. Kicked a couple of goals. Goes down towards the half-forward line. Solomon was very busy early too, and he's going to need support here. Well done by Solomon. By G did well. Now they're away up towards the half-forward line. Collins was punched from behind. Lucas is there. He's taken to the line. We've got to throw him. Jeff, gives them a different look in their forward line now with Alessio playing on there. Nicholson's had to go to Alessio, and Phoebe's dropped back onto Hurd. Which, uh, if it and gets instant, down there and instantly, Malcolm, the herd's gone straight to the goal square yeah. and he's one out. Yeah. Nine possessions by Woden in Mercedes to this stage. Mercedes over the top of a ward with him. And a 
the ball up. Just following on from that, Jason, one of the problems was Hurd was terrific for that five minutes he went onto the ball. Yep. By doing that now, you're actually taking him out of the game again, unless the ball gets deep into the forward And line. also moving Matty Lloyd out of position. Yep. Although they wouldn't be upset about dragging uh, Anthony Ingerson up the ground, I wouldn't think. Oh, look at the SEO there with Nicholson. Nicholson just gets it wide to Masibu. Couldn't break the tackle. Ward's kick along the line. Gains about 20 metres, I guess. Another boundary throw in. They're scrapping pretty well, the Demons, at the moment, aren't they? It's a stalemate at the moment, isn't it? Carousel is dangerous. He starts running forward in this yep. point. Alessio and Nicholson contesting. And another stalemate. You might notice the Essendon players wearing black armbands. The father of one of their recruiting men, Adrian Deodora, passed away. There's a mark of respect. The Bombers wearing the armbands. Powell again. Another possession. He's on centre wing. Got a call from centre wing. The advantage is now being paid. Wellman's at the back. So really any advantage disappeared. Fletcher gets it back to Wellman. Drifts it wide towards centre wing and Blumfield the target. Got him in front of Johnston. Essendon unable to break the demon shackles at the moment. Him to her. Well, James if, you, Hurd. if you had have seen James Hurd from the moment Justin Blumfield got the ball, he led from deep forward straight up the middle into a bit of traffic and it was ignored. He then swung around, he doubled back, and then as the kick came, then he propped and he did a short lead and found a bit of space. It was beautiful work to keep moving in the forward line. He's kicking from 50 metres. Lovely looking kick. Hurd has done it again. Big margin of the match so far. Out to 17 points. Demons need the next one. Wide over the top. Powell read it well. Powell from 60. Wobbly kick. Farmer was held on to. He's going to get a free kick. He was grabbed. So this uh, wizard, this genius... As Johnson comes off for Simmons, gets his first shot at goal. Well, from a Melbourne point of view, this is probably the most important kick of the day for Demons fans, just for Jeff Farmer to register a goal to get his confidence up and start becoming a goal-scoring threat. In golfing terms, it's a little four-footer that you've sort of got to make, isn't it? He's very worried about the players that are around on the side, and I don't know why. It shouldn't be a give-me, and he's put it through. And 36 behinds. So Melbourne answer. Ragoni out of the middle. A little too high for Phoebe. Could be a costly turnover. Picked up by Heffernan and a high ball. They're inside 50. They're towards Lucas Territory. Lloyd and Carousel are also. Hurd slaps it over the back. Big Lucas around the body. He goes in towards full forward. And a strong mark on the last line of defence by Nicholson. Very strong mark under pressure, that one. He was really under the pump. But he did it well. Off he goes to Ragoni from half back in towards White, who's down towards the middle. Jeff White lopes clear. Melbourne can turn it over here and go up towards the half forward line. The diving mark in front of Hardwick, taken by Uze. He goes on to the left foot. Shocking kick. Very disappointed he'd be in that. Wallace has called a play on. He's got Hurd out wide. James Hurd lopes clear of Phoebe. Passes in towards the half forward line. Alessio drops what he should have taken. Goes again, slapped away from Collins. Lloyd gets it off to Lucas. Lucas can goal. And they are missing some dead set opportunities. He has had a couple, Scott Lucas. That's probably been his best. Good work from Matty Lloyd. He just keeps working hard, even if he's not taking marks and having shots for goal. He attacked the ball, he delivered the handball out. James Hurd seems to have a free reign at the moment. He can go forward and be used as the main target there, or he comes up onto the ball. That's well, a terrible ball. Well, gets a free kick. Yes. <laughs> Stephen Phoebe was the target, so uh, now Hurd to bring it in. It's funny they've used a couple, two or three different people to kick out. Normally you go with one, maybe two, that do the job. So Hurd about 70 metres from goal, centering kick, just nice. waited it for Barnes or Alessio, big flyers. Lucas, Lucas, clever, but misses. I'm starting to think about North Melbourne, the Kangaroos and... And Adelaide a couple of years ago, is Malcolm, it was 6.15 to 4.3 at half time that day. Right now, it's 5.10 to 4.3. I've got a question, Jason. Where is the right foot? 
He didn't want to use it, did he? I mean, quite, yes. He had space to throw it quickly onto the right boot, but he didn't. Kick three behinds, Lucas. Once again, the one before was uh, an easier shot, but a lot of these kicks have actually been under pressure from out wide. That was certainly a hard goal. Well, hard shot at goal. Five goals, ten. So Melbourne stay in it. Not with kicks like that. It wasn't a mark. It was on the half volley, and it should be locked up there, but they'd be disappointed with that result. Still no sign of Brad Green. I've just uh, kept my eye on the race down there, and uh, the boy's still in, uh, in the rooms. Thank you, Dipper. For those who just joined us, Green copped a couple of heavy ones early in the first quarter. Wellman from the centre goes towards Carousella. With him also was Alessio. Hurd's running the boundary line. He just kept it in play. Lloyd back to Carousella. Clever! Beautifully done by Blake Carousella. Had 10 kicks and four marks heard and kicked a couple. Mercury's work was brilliant, so was Hurd's. Demon 6 4 out of the centre. Powell's taken it out three times. They need it again here. The floodgates haven't opened, but the Bombers are really turning up the heat. Johnson out of the centre. Kicks to half forward. Mercury's hands were terrific. Wants to play on, he does. And then tries to keep his balance. Kicks towards Alessio. Lucas front spot. Alessio charging out. Handball, Hurd's handball wide to Barnes, sits and waits, little left foot into the pocket, Collins has got it. Melbourne are just hanging on at the moment, aren't they? They are just hanging on. They need a break here, they need to get some rhythm, they need to cut a line. Can Walsh do it at half back, short to, uh, to White, comes back in board to McDonald. This has been the pattern of the play when they've been good, releases Gergic about... Gets to about 65, loads it up. It's a great kick. It's going through. He just missed at the last moment. And Jeff Farmer ruefully opens up his arms as a gesture to say, why didn't you pass it to me when I led early? A look again at James Hurd, and that ball did in total look to be over the line and out of bounds. But that's history now. Blumfield. Mark's almost down at the centre. He looks towards half forward. He's got a Lucas and Solomon lurking there also. The Bombers starting to flex their muscles in the form of Mercedes. Gets it wide to Ramanaskis. In towards Lucas again. I'll tell you what, that work rate's pretty good at Scott Lucas. We know he's missed a few opportunities, but a moment ago he contested at half forward. The ball broke loose, a handball came out, and he was up and leading the space again. Well, it will test him. It's not the pocket for a left footer. There's a bit of a problem with him doing that, though, Jason. He's actually taking the full forwards run a fair bit. I think if you were there, you'd be reminding him of his positional play. I would, and he'd probably be ignoring me as well, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> there you can see what he can see. He's got an operating target of just over three metres from that angle. The left footer from Camperdown has missed to the left. Four and points. Four behind. 6'11". Plays four goals for midway through the second quarter. They really need to clear it from their zone now. Essendon going very traditional, three, four, and then five. But Melbourne have brought down some extra players. Solomon standing at the middle of the ground makes it hard for them to go down the middle. So Phoebe comes wide from Nicholson. Oh! Hurt, brilliant. He's been a magnificent leader in this first half and then caresses it to Alessio and gets him. Well, everything James Heard at the moment is turning to goal. He has the Midas touch. James Heard, by the way, is favourite for the Norm Smith medal. And at this stage, why wouldn't he be? And one M. Blight is amongst the vote givers for that. And he would be casting a very keen eye over the performance, I would think. He's going okay. What, He's going okay. Okay. <laughs> it was a very intelligent kick to it. It looked like Alessio was outnumbered. But what he did realise was that he had a distinct height advantage. And he just put it up in a position where Alessio could use that height. Saw the goal view a moment ago. They need one of these. I say need it. They're on top 6 11 or 4 4. But this would give them a four goal break. Plenty of time to go before half time, but it's all at one end at the moment. The favourites are away with a good lead, and Alessio has missed it. It is North Melbourne like two years Look, ago. They're 6 12. Once they, again, it's, it's not from the easiest spot on the ground, though. No, and there is a swirly breeze out there. Yeah. But Look, it's keeping Melbourne in the game, but it is a real danger sign when the opposition has had twice as many scoring shots as you have. And just down on the ground with Dipper at quarter time, fellas, that wind has probably picked up a little bit and he's certainly swirling around a little bit more than what you think. 
Look, I just think the uh, the kick then, I mean, he really tried to steer Stabbed. it. Didn't I mean, it's just always has been better to kick a full blooded kick. Rigoni goes back again towards Phoebe. He's got his skates on. He's away, but Barnes is going to top this off on centre wing. John Barnes coming back to the old club. Carousella loose on the outer side. Thought about Lloyd, but now chips towards Solomon. One, two grabs. It's not his. But beautifully clipped away towards Johnson. Johnson goes towards Lucas. He's playing from behind. It doesn't matter. He's got players in front, and the Bombers are starting to motor. Mark McCurry gets his first. Just Bruce. Sorry, mate. Who's off the ground? Ben Bean's on. He struggled, Uzo, hasn't he, in this uh, first half? So he's off, and Beams gets his first run. Beams coming in for Bruce. But the Bombers are way on top here, and the Demons need something. Maybe their Brownlow medalist can do it for them. Roy Woden's probing kick. Neitz has got it. He was fending off Fletcher, and I thought Hartwick had the run, and Neitz was able to take a very clever mark. Boy, does the captain need to kick the goal right now. Chris, quite frankly, this is the only way Melbourne can get back in the game. If they can't get the ball out the centre, just around the ground, they're being outgunned and outmanned. And if they can't get that quick transition in the forward line, it's, it, it'll turn out to be pretty ugly, I'd reckon. Just has to kick it, doesn't it? Won't get a better chance to bring the Demons back into it. He's put it straight through the middle. The captain's goal keeping Melbourne afloat late in the first half here at the MCG White can't get it out of the middle the Barnes hand pass was wide towards centre wing they lose it again it's flicked towards the half forward line Neitz needs someone going past doesn't get it he goes again he's taken to ground there's some beffing as Leon Chelly tries to force his way through a wall of red and black he's not successful and Brett Allen comes in to take charge Johnson about to come on for Phoebe 19 effective scoring shots to nine. Not a good bounce. Taken away by White, who didn't contest. Wellman, eyes on the ball at all times. Too much height for Powell, and he positioned himself the better. Swartz now playing centre half back along the back line there, Malcolm. Wellman wide towards Hurd. Hurd just keeps it in play. Had Wellman going past. He elects to go inboard a little further to Wallace. So the Bombers looking to start something from defence again. He can go short to Johnson. Fletcher running past. Now they've got it. Just about every player in one half of the ground. Fletcher's kick up towards the forward line. Lloyd a little too far underneath was drawn. And it's taken over the line, beating Collins for throwing. Inside the Bombers 50. They've dominated this quarter. Melbourne have kicked two goals, one. Essendon have kicked three goals for Brisbane Lions coach Lee Matthews and his partner Debbie. As you can see, Essendon dominating inside 50 in this term. Powell from half back. Thought about going short, but then elected Travis Johnston. Has spent time on the bench, but he chips away now. Up towards me to get to front, takes the mark. He's actually causing problems for Dustin Fletcher. Could go short to Beams, but elects to go longer to the Wizard. Johnson is there with him. The umpire lets them go. It's a one-out deal. Not a great spot to put it, was it? He could have held it up and come back the other way. Would have been a much, much more dangerous position to kick it. It's almost where the kicker can dictate where the yeah, person leading has right. to go. Ignore the initial lead and signal him to go back to goal. Kick yep. it to the open corridor. Right forward pocket for the Demons. A heap of players around it. Neats works Barnes out, then belts towards the line, Masudi. So we're back to where we were a moment ago. Lucas coming off there, boys. Yes. Tipper, just uh, Schwartz and White just swapped for a while. White went a bit forward. Schwartz had a three-minute run on the footy, so they've done that a couple of times. So Long coming on for Lucas. Again in the pocket. Now Barnard there, Bruce. Barnes at the back. Barnard is a thanks. Johnson. Gee, McCurry had it for a fair while. Gets rid of it now. McDonald takes them on. Little handball inside. Hasn't found his man. Liam Chelly can't quite get the reflex handball. Powell's been pretty good. Tries to crash his way through. The Bombers tackling brilliant. Jason Johnson gets it out to Blumfield. And Blumfield kicks it wide. Alessio has to chase hard. Gee, they're good. The Bombers at the back. They Powell, are. 
very good at the back, and that's what I'm saying. Quick transition. Any of this 50-50 stuff, Essendon is starting to muscle them. Powell's attack on the ball at half forward was great, but the two blokes he had to try and crash through were Dean Solomon and Jason Johnson. <laughs> he just had no chance. Yeah. And you just get the feeling the momentum has stepped up a little in the last couple of minutes. Let's remember that Melbourne is a very, very fit outfit. They'll go all day as Schwartz goes over the top of Jason Johnson. We're getting sick of getting hit this late. Look at the last couple of weeks he's, uh, he's well, got he's the field. another one here. He's not going to take the kick. It's going to be Ramanaskis. Kicks towards the 50. Big pack of players once again. Mark McCurry eventually got his nose in front. It's a high ball taken towards the half forward line. Blumfield was there, couldn't take the mark. Wellman through the Carousella hand pass off to Blumfield, and again they miss this time to the right. Seven goals, 13. And we're a long, long way away from it. But when Essendon tied with Melbourne in 1948, they kicked seven goals, 27. Two dangerous kicking, cut off by the Bombers. Mercedes handball to McCurry, to Barnard, and another miss. He's just come on the ground, Barnard. He's had two kicks that have gone off the side a bit. Yeah, the first one, he had a bit of time to set something up. The second one was a very hurried uh, left foot kick under pressure, but... Bruce, what's the record for points to half-time? Well, it was 6.15 against you a couple of years ago. I'm sure there's more, but uh, they're at 7.14 right now. The kick-ins are a problem, though, a for real the Demons, aren't yeah. they? Heffernan can't get clear. The ball comes back to Masidi. Sweeping hand passes wide to Wellman. Wellman 70 metres out. Pokes it up towards the half-forward line. The ball got to stand. And courage was required there. Well done by Ingerson. Melbourne making another change. Looks dip as though Robertson's about to come on. Yeah, for Gurkic there, Sandy. Ingerson plays on to Johnson. And Travis Johnston ambles towards Robertson. Spots him now. Solomon late on the scene. Robertson takes the mark. Plays on now with a crucial few minutes lurking. Ragoni, it's a high kick. They're into the half forward line once again. Big fly. No mark. Rip to the ground. Take it high. Looks like Walsh at the bottom. Good play on. And he does. He goes short, finding Ragoni, who's a little further out. Gee, that's a tough play on call. He virtually only looked sideways as though he was looking for an option, and the umpire waved play on. Not a renowned goal kicker, Guy Ragoni, just late have, for the season. He does have penetration on his kicks, though. He can kick the ball a long way, Sandy. Let's see what he can do here. While Essendon's been frittering away with behinds, they've booted three goals, six in this quarter. Melbourne has booted three goals, one. Big kick for Melbourne. Big kick for Guy Ragoni. He's gone for the doctor, and in so doing, he's well away to the right. Jason Johnson off there, boys, and uh, Michael Long back on now. Fletcher wide, so Lloyd very deep and then uses Wallace at halfback. Wallace with a bit of time, goes along the line, hurts the target, why not? He's been outstanding, he's going to get a free kick. Nicholson are just bringing him down. I'll tell you what, it's actually a good play to bring him down because if James Hurd kept his feet, he was behind the defence, would have run in to an open goal. Here's a go. Go short to Long, well done at the front from uh, Ingerson. Long's handball, terrific. Blomfield, Barnard, at long last they've got a goal. Big five minutes now for Neil Danaher. Gee, Ingerson's come Melbourne. off uh, Sandy with a Blood very bad cut hit there. Yeah. This is bleeding from the head there. Okay, Gurgic is on. Essendon open up a very telling lead. 8 14 plays 5 4. Melbourne need a couple of quick answers in these next five minutes. Ragoni wobbles one past McDonald. Chopped off again, however, by Wallace. Heffernan comes in over the top. Leoncelli's there. Bluntfield also with Solomon. And again, a bounce to take place. Wonderful sight here at the MCG. Sellout crowd. And Melbourne throwing everything at the warm favourites, Essendon. As you can see by those tackles. He's one of the greats of the game, Graham Polly Farmer.
enjoying the 2000 grand final. Blumfield, the likely down to Masidi, wider to the outer side. Barnard was away with a race, but he lost it. He can go again. He clings to that ball. Lurking over the top was Peter Walsh. And well done by Barnard. I know we've seen some of the Melbourne players, but we've still got Moorcroft and Buick to come. Yeah. Like, that's just, you know, we've still got some pace left and plenty of time. That's the last time they met. That was in round nine. The Bombers did win by 13. Although there was no Jeff Allen, there were a couple of big guns for the Bombers missing as well. The big possession is at the moment. Heard has 15, Blumfield 14, Masiti 14. You don't, you don't really notice Joe that much. It's just amassing them. Gets them on the defensive, defensive side of the yep. pack. Five the, tackles too for Jason Johnson. He's been busy. For the Demons, Regani 15, Powell 12, by Woden 10. Schwartz, Alessio coming over the top was Simmons. Here's Blumfield. The Bombers go towards 50, but Nicholson, well, he seemed to pause, and he did pause. The door has opened for Lloyd. Lloyd will go again, and again! We get a couple before half-time. White came off his head in the end. Bombers right on top. Mercedes brilliant to Blumfield. Goes to goal. Long. Got it. Walsh went to ground and long standing tall. Justin Blumfield is destroying them across the middle of the ground. His ability to link up, find space, 16 possessions is just a, an outstanding performance. The Demon supporters can't bear the sight of another bomber shot for goal. Well, he thrilled us all in 93, didn't he, with his searching runs through the middle in that grand final. Long from point blank range. As Mr. It's a bad, as bad a kick as he's ever kicked, I reckon. Uh, we talked about the interchange, Malcolm and Darren Buick. Well, at last he's got a chance. He is on. Carousel off. Poor old Blake Carousel. He's only kicked three goals, had 12 touches, and you get a stint on the bench. Ingleson back on two there, boys, and Gurk kick off. Uze. Wants Ragoni. Blumfield has been very good. He got the first touch. Ragoni runs into a brick wall. Blumfield it was who tried to get it out. Could have been a high tackle, but no. Plown was the call, and so they do. Uze goes over the top towards the Ox. Schwartz has got it on centre wing. Worm burning pass goes up towards Neitz. Difficult one for him. Could have caught one a little in the back from Fletcher, but no. He keeps on going. Had it for a long time. Off he goes to Schwartz. He took his eye off at the critical moment. Travis Johnston won't get clearer. Powell will. Powell has kicked a couple in the first quarter. They desperately need this, but they won't get it. One behind. Good there, Powell. Just to win it. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. You almost sense that Melbourne need two goals in a row, don't yeah. you? Just to get some yeah. real momentum and the team behind, the crowd, everything won the lift. Hard work. It always gave you something if you could go into halftime having yeah. contributed the last goal on the scoreboard. Over the back, Blumfield. Uh, he took it over the line. So we've got to throw in on that outer side. But Blumfield has been busy. He has 16 possessions. And the carousel at 12. There's a couple of the Melbourne names that we know. Stephen Tingo's had dreadful injury problems. Matthew Phoebe. Was, we understand quite emotional before this game with the late change being made. This is Wellman. Tumbling a punt towards uh, the centre wing area again. Uzan Poe set over the line. And not for the first time. Not for the first time the Demons have given away silly free kicks. Gee, that's well, proven costly, haven't they? Would you say it's not for the first time? Lloyd was taken high there. The advantage is paid. Isn't it advantage? Barnard will tell you that. Yes, it is. Here they go. Lock, stock and two-gun smoking. Farmer's uh, jumper was ripped off his back by Dean Wallace. Gee, um... This will suit the Bombers perfectly, getting into his head like that. If he's uh, distracted and wants to get on with the physical stuff, they'll be happy with that. Put a gap in them, haven't they? Demons of uh, some uh, poor discipline. Adam Uze giving away a ridiculous free kick at centre wing, and it all started from there. Mercedes gets it to centre half forward. Nicholson almost. Barnard's been terrific. Schwartz at the back. Decides to load it up. Torpedo punt. It's all Bombers. Wallace is enjoying it. 
He's having a terrific afternoon. Blumfield's been brilliant. To Hardwick. To half forward. Alessio and Simmons. Simmons. Oh, oh, oh. Catches him. Gee whiz. That's ridiculous. Michael Long. He could get reported for that. Just charged straight through him, isn't he? Taking him up the front. It's very dangerous when you do attack a player's head like that when he's over the ball. Well, it's on here. This could be a defining moment. As Melbourne oh. players streaming in. I'll tell you what, I think it was James Hurd who came in to remonstrate with David Schwartz, and David Schwartz just picked him up and body slammed him. Gee, it was a reckless charge by Long, it really was. That young boy had no chance to protect himself there. We certainly hope that he's not injured in any serious fashion for us, isn't it? That's uh, really ordinary. of the crowd they were just willing the demons to get back into it clock has stopped with a minute and a half remaining in the half and troy simmons will be stretched from the ground nicholson still remonstrating with michael long buick there trying to calm him down Yeah, the youngster just didn't sense him coming. You know, sometimes in a game of footy, you can just turn your body just to protect yourself, and uh, unfortunately, just did not feel him at all. Wallace looks like he's uh, putting his finger back in after having it dislocated. Well, if you play long enough, Bruce, they do tend to pop out, so there's no problems there. You'll get a bit of tape on that eventually, and uh, that won't have an effect on the game. Always just... fun when you put them back in, though. <laughs> All the Bob and boys are uh, grouping together, they're calling each other in. Looks like James Hurst is telling his players to focus on the ball. Don't get caught into any of this rough stuff. Concentrate on the ball, we're doing the right thing. We'll get the free kicks. He's led his team brilliantly hurt, yep. hasn't he? See what, Justin Blumfield's playing some game. He's now uh, leading possession winner on the ground with 17. So here's Troy he Simmons. Just, just couldn't quite get out of the way, could he? Just... I mean, it's a terrible one. We hope that led's all right. I mean, it was just one of those terrible things in footy. Came to the club from Box Hill last year in the pre-season. Played just five games last year. And he's really made his mark this year as the backup ruckman. So the neck brace is obviously a precaution, but we hope it's only a concussion. I mean, at best, that would be the best we could hope for. I think. One of the things, Bruce, I've just been watching this. And Schwartz is not in the game. I mean, this may actually force Neil Danaher to throw caution to the wind like he did halfway through the year, put Neitz as a ruckman, put White up forward, because White's dominance in the centre has been stymied somewhat in this quarter. Well, Schwartz has drifted down to the half-back line to try and get himself in the game and maybe try and take a bit of pressure off their defence, Malcolm, but that's probably not the right way to assert yourself in a situation like that, no. though, is it? But I have seen him play well with a kick behind the game yep. and set up the play. Well, there's a minute 30 basically remaining, a little bit less, so... Can the demon strike a blow late here? Just one goal would help their cause because the Bombers are 40 points in front. And this young 22-year-old uh, Ruckman, it's a long way to bring him off the ground from one side to the other. We're reassessing it here, I think, as we look at Kevin Sheedy and uh, Mark Harvey. The trainers are just having another look at uh, Troy and they're going to uh, go again here. Brad Green, by the way, didn't come back, did he, uh, Dipper, from uh, quarter time? He's, no, he's still in the rooms here, uh, Bruce, so well, obviously the bench is down to two now. They lost Cameron Bruce before the match. Did, uh, did you get any word there, Dipper, on... Uh, was the lad conscious, or is think they're going to be OK? Uh, we don't know uh, that as yet, uh, Malcolm. We'll let you know as soon as we can find out. So up the race... Simmons goes. And the game's about to restart. And the Demons need some magic in this last minute. The kick to half forward and Wallace with the centre week and Wallace has got it. He's having a very good game, Dean Wallace. 
Everything is with the Bombers at the moment, isn't it? They've got the fit men, they've got the score on the board, they've got the momentum, they're in form, and they've got the pedigree behind them. The favourites look good things. A floater by Wallace over the back, Schwartz. Comes wide. Funny old kick, he may find Pow, he searched for it. Heard hasn't put a foot wrong. Still Heard finds his target to Wellman. Wellman at centre wing goes to half forward. Long, cleverly done, taps it down. Searching handball by McCurry. Uh, come back to, long. Kick back to long. Now, I can just answer your question there about the young boy. He is conscious, that's the good news. And obviously, he goes straight up into the rooms. Thanks, Tipper. You see, you think he's out of range from there, Michael Long, from outside 50. Barnes is by himself in the middle. Normally goes short in this situation. There is a lot of traffic. Barnes. It's 50 metres out now. He's looking, he's looking, he's deciding to go for goal. And it's a behind. So a couple of points to Michael Long. In fact, he's kicked three behinds, Michael Long. 10-16 to 5-5. Five, five. I reckon that's got to be the record now, Bruce. I can't remember anyone kicking 16 points and a half of footy in the first half of the grand final. And the Demons haven't looked very good coming out of it either, have they? From the back. And Michael Long coming across here, rallying his troops. It's been all lessened in the second part of that second term. James Hurd talking to Darren Goldsmith about the incident. Goldsmith was the closest umpire. Not sure if Long got reported or not. I don't think so. It's hard to tell. But uh, Dipper may find out. Kevin Sheedy, who will equal Dick Reynolds' record of four premierships if they're successful today. But the onus now is on the Demons to come back because the Bombers have made all the running. And at halftime, Jason and I will have a look after the break, followed by Sandy and Malcolm. Hello. Searching handball, Woe Woden. A left footer, hooks it back, 2-4 four forward. Neats is a charge, got it. Touched off the boot, touched play off the boot. Let's play on. Farmer got a high tackle free kick. He soaked it, Farmer, he did well. The umpire was a long way away. Once again, they've got the ball out the middle. So they're a bit of a chance. It's when there's the, they don't get the ball out the middle and they've got to really go man on man around the ground. It just hasn't worked for it's them. It's almost how the game started. Yeah. The first big jump to Jeff White, yeah. the good tap, yeah. the ball going forward. You can just see that was touched off the boot. Uh, and in the end, Jeez, a bit he was probably lucky to get it. He did, uh, he did play like he was looking for an Oscar, didn't he? Well, you don't need me to tell you that he has to kick it. They've got to kick all of them, don't they, as they go forward. Can't miss any of them. Farmer from 45 metres. He's got it. He's kicked two. Remember against Collingwood when he kicked nine goals after half time? It's different opposition, I know. But that's the best start possible. Neats takes the mark. Farmer might have got a lucky free kick, but at least he kicks his second. And as I said before, Jeff Farmer has kicked two goals from three kicks. At the end of the day, if you kick two or three, if the ball's not going to get down there, he's going to do his job. Um, gee, they need a lot more ball down there, that's all. Plenty happening between Mark Johnson and Jeff Farmer too, and uh, Luiz, he gives as good as he gets. Have a look at the verbal stash going on there. Well, let's go back to the middle. Important out of the centre. When White gets a hand to it and they can win it clear, they're a big chance, and uh, the Wiz is still they blasting still away here with Johnson. Yep. Dustin Fletcher and David Neeks trying to get between them. They are going nose to nose. Barnes wins it, but it's a little toe poke out of the middle. Eventually, the hurried high kick is by Mercedes down towards the half corner. Watch Ramon Askis. He got caught, but he was, managed to get it away towards Lloyd. Hartley smothered off the boot. Plough will be the call. It's a high tackle. It will come back. McDonald will clear. He gives it off to Travis Johnston. Johnston to Liam Chelly, who's on the half back line. Now Melbourne away, up towards the centre wing and Daniel Ward. Ward's got White going with him, but he ignores him. Gets around Blumfield, who was dominant in the first half. Kicks up towards the half forward line. Fletcher took his eye off it. Farmer's there, but he could have given away a free kick. He did give away a free kick. The Bombers steady through McCurry. 
wide to Mercedes on half back. Heard breaks from the centre and stretches to the wing. He ignores Wallace and goes more directly down there. Oh, sensational mark by Lloyd. A one-hander. Shades of his teammate Adam Ramanowskis not so long ago. Lloyd in towards the 50. The sun causing a few problems. Wide to Solomon. The hand pass was good from Carousella. Great. Centering kick. That's a beauty. Barnes dropped another one in the forward line. Long, beautifully done. Blumfield gives it back. Johnson, Alessio, surely a goal. The Bombers answer. Great teamwork by the Bombers. Long so clever. 11 16 to 6 5. Barnes and White, White clearly, Mercedes read it in the right place. Jason Johnson kicks to half forward. Barnard chasing hard against Phoebe. Ingerson got back. Uses Ragoni, had a lot of possessions in the first half. A few of them wasted. That's up and under. White courageously. Robertson belts it forward. Hardwick and Fletcher. Fletcher's got plenty of time. Sweeps the handball wide. Oh, it's Hurd's got a paddock. Played a brilliant game. Wobbly old kick. Oh, McCurry's hands were so strong. Saw the chance to play on McCurry, but then held up. Long leads for him in the pocket. McCurry kicks it to him. Got him. Comes to set out forward. Good kick to Blumfield and Barnard. Just too strong around the ground now, aren't they? Everywhere where you look. Yeah, that's why I think the Demons have got to do something different. I don't think you can keep going through the same motions. I mean, they're going to be where they started at half-time or further behind. Just try something. I mean, it might not be their day. It might be something for Danaher can build on for next season. Barnard, uh, his mum, Anne, he asked her to come over to watch him in the grand final. She said she'd be too nervous. She's back in Bunbury watching right now. She'd be proud of Paul because he's kicked two goals already. So did his dad, David, who played for East Perth as a rover. And he's kicked three. The Bombers on the verge of turning last year's tragedy into triumph. Uze. Wide from half-back towards centre wing. The bomber machine through Johnson, drifted towards Hurd. Gets rid of his opponent, but then gets claimed by Gurgic. Could have thrown it out. Gives it off to Lloyd. Lloyd's left footer down towards Michael Long. Almost taken high. Cleverly done by Heffernan around the body. Got a call that no one there. Long gave away some height. Phoebe, Solomon. Solomon goes. He held it for a long time. He gave it to Blumfield. And Blumfield gets a goal. Well, he sat with Kevin Sheedy seven years ago, Neil Danaher. He'll be scratching his head now. They need a miracle to get back into it in any way, shape or form because the Bombers are playing great footy here and they are a great team. Leon Chelly to Uze, he's had a dirty day. Goes to full forward, Johnson, good mark. That's brilliant. They're having a real personal battle, these two, aren't they? There's no love lost, but Mark Johnson took a superb mark. There he is. Short to Jason Johnson. The Wizards got him. Holding the ball. Oh. Well, Jason Johnson just picks himself up. Oh. Phoebe down to Johnston. Good tackle on Johnston. Now, he didn't dispose of the ball correctly. Why would that not be paid a free kick? It's, he doesn't handball or kick it. That's been holding the ball all year. Yes. Oh. No question. Whether you agree with the rule or not, it's been holding the ball all year. Play goes on from centre wing, tap wide, and little toe poke towards the line by Masidi. Bruce, it over. haven't seen it paid lot later in the year. The umpires actually put the whistle away on it a fair bit. And quite frankly, the umpire didn't, wasn't sure whether the boot actually the ball touched his boot. Went very close to his boot as it spilled out. Barnes. What are you looking at, Jason? Don't you agree with that? Hey. And white oh, play goes on, Malcolm. Yeah, for consistency, <laughs> Malcolm. Who's eight? Towards right half forward, ricochets away from the boot towards Powell. He loses it. Kept in play by Robertson. He eludes one, he eludes two. Gives it off to Wo Woden, 60 metres from home. Big kick. Here they go again towards Farmer and Johnson. Superman. 
That is the super mark. He looked the least likely of the four to actually be in position to mark that. Johnson and Farmer were pushing and shoving at the back of the pack, and you had the back pedalling Fletcher and Neitz, and he just imposed his body on the contest. He just leans back into the middle of all the traffic, takes them all with him, and takes a very strong one grab mark in front. So the skipper gets a chance to kick his second. His only goal coming in the second quarter. Twenty five meters out. Leeds gets the goal. He gets his second. And Melbourne's second for the quarter, Jeff Farmer getting the other. Well, they're working overtime to get their goals, the Demons. What they had to do was string two or three together. I mean, they can't undo all this hard work by letting the Bombers go straight back down the other end and kick an easy goal. You can just see that is a super mark from David Neitz. Doesn't play badly, Neitz, has he? I mean, he's, he's caused trouble. I mean, Fletcher's looked a little bit... He's had four shots for Struggling goal. a few times just to get hold of him, yep. 13-16 to 7-5. It's still a lopsided board. It's double the score still for the Bombers. 94 to 47. The Demons have been okay out the centre. Liam Chelly's quick kick the full forward. Neat at the back. Nobody crumbing. Solomon's been terrific. Does he find the line? Yes. Gee, for a young bloke, he's very cool being Solomon. He just always does the right thing. So at about 45 metres, Prime Minister of Australia, Honourable John Howard in the middle there. Enjoying the afternoon at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Barnes over the top. Masidi, Heard. Still Hurd. Oh, James. He's God. gone. Yeah, good call. He just took on one too many, I think. Powell's actually kicked a goal and it won't count. Well, you can see he was in some pretty heavy track. He evaded one, two, three, and I think the third or fourth caught him and he didn't dispose the ball correctly. <coughs> He had three prior opportunities. I think that was fair enough to hold the ball. Well, you happy with that one, Mel? Happy with that one, Mel? Happy. Yeah, with that one. <laughs> happy. Uh, Settling down off the off the ball here. And Bruce, while that was happening, Alessio left the ground. Lucas back on. So they've been pretty accurate in this quarter. The Demons. Robertson, a goal kicker, not an easy shot. Plugger and Dipper have talked about the conditions. 45 metres out. Good pretty good kick. He's kicked it. They stay with a rough, rough chance. At half time, the margin was 41 points. It's still 41 points. Barnes, copper push. He's got the ball from the middle against Lee and Shelley. Anything Melbourne has done, Essendon has been able to immediately answer. Will that be the case this time, or can Melbourne get some sort of a run going up towards the 50? Uze, a high clearing kick goes back towards the half back line. Oh. Heffernan's waiting down. He's still going. Heffernan wobbles a little one just inside 50 once more. They pounce on a Barnard, try to lock it up. Powell gets a hand pass wide. Once again, it's locked away. Uze, through heavy traffic, comes back towards centre wing, chopped off by Solomon. Been very good. Can go towards Barnes on the outer side or even further. And elects to go further. Finding Barnard. He's been good with three goals, two in the second quarter. Goes long and there's Holding a three down, field. down field. It's going the way of Essendon. Darren Goldspeak was the umpire who spotted it. And here it is. Some jumper holding going on by Peter Walsh, but... It doesn't look much, but that's what one of the reasons why the third umpire was brought in, to see that sort of infraction happening. Here's what lies ahead for Michael Long. Has 41 kicked, metres. Has not kicked well, Michael Long, today. Three points to his name at this stage. From 45. That's a better-looking kick. That's a beauty.
At Eastlake, we just love sport, and we're celebrating the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games with an astronomical giveaway. Weekly for seven weeks, someone will win a key to this Olympic edition Holden Astra, valued at $23,500. Then on Thursday, September 28, if that key opens the door, it's your car. Come in, swipe your card, celebrate the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games on the big screen, and you could be the lucky winner. The Eastlake Football Club Astronomical Giveaway. And remember, we're open 24 hours a day. The demon dugout, there's not much there, is there? With all due respects, there's a blood rule here. Stephen Powell. Stephen Powell. Powell. So Stephen Phoebe to come on. Actually, Bruce, youngsters Bruce and Green against Carlton were the ones that turned it in the yeah. last quarter. They're not going to be part of this. Absolutely, with Bruce not playing today, Beam's coming in for him and uh, Green out of business. So Stephen Powell with a nick. Bombers are up to 100 points. Only once this year as a team kicked 100 points against them, and that was right on the knocker. Collingwood on Anzac Day, so there's just so many things at the moment that are suggesting that it's going to be a huge Essendon win, but Melbourne have just got to keep running, pushing forward, and trying to score. So many players around the ball. White gets a hand on, lays it down to Travis Johnson, up and under, gets the ball to set a half forward, nobody can get a crack at it from... Melbourne's point of view, and Hardwick takes a very easy mark. Someone has to at least make a contact. Well, I, I don't understand why Schwartz playing so hard forward is nowhere near there. Surely that's a place to play. Poor kick by Ramanowskis. Liam Chilly came in late. Johnson's kick's a good one. Uze at last starting to find a bit of the footy. Good kick out wide. Walsh might have hurt himself a bit in the run down the ground and then turning around in a hurry. It's going Robertson to be... by himself. He's come across to him, Dipper. Can Robertson... Oh! Oh, at the back. I'm going to tell you, when he approached that ball, I thought all he was going to do was give a free kick away for pushing in the back. And at the last minute, at the very last minute, he somehow just elevated himself. Look, it, he touched him on the back with his hand, but he didn't use the hand to get the lift up. That was just to set the point where he was going to take off from. That's a spectacular mark. It's a beauty, all right. He kicked late goals against the Kangaroos when the match was basically over, but he's uh, kicked one goal in this quarter from a similar position, slightly tighter angle, about the same distance out. We're right behind him. It needs to come back, and it's not going to. So it's a bad hook there. So he looked like he got too close to the man on the mark when he kicked then. Margin of 46 points. That's just a great, honest jump, isn't it? That's just mm. natural spring. He's not a tall lad either, is he? Young man from Burnie showing us his aerial work. Johnson. The Bombers clear once again. Johnson, Hardwick and Co. all season. They've been so miserly. Barnes has beaten for him this time. Schwartz is screaming for it in the middle and he's got it now. Maybe they can set something up here, but they've put a, got to put multiple goals on the board. Solomon almost pulled down a one-hander. Robertson looks for the free kick, and he's going to get it. Sandy, just while you're calling that piece of play, Alistair Nicholson's just walked around the boundary line, and he's going to sit in the dugout. So that's uh, that's terrific news for, for all demons. Of Troy, Simmons. Troy Simmons. Uh, yeah. Troy Simmons. Sorry. Troy Simmons, that is good news. After copping a very heavy knock earlier in the game. Great to see him back. Now here's Roberts. Touched off the boot. Robbie old punt kick. And again they're going to clear it. And come back towards Blumfield. He smashes towards it in opposition to Roberts and gives it away to Fletcher. He pokes it up towards centre wing. Barnard used the body. Gave a little bit of a nudge and it didn't go unnoticed. Collins on centre wing. Melbourne will run all day. Don't worry about that. They're the fittest side in the competition. But they're playing the best side in the competition. In towards half forward, strong mark taken by White. Directly in front, 65 out, Jeff White. Swartz by himself, the right hand side here. He elects to go to the other side. Leeds has got to make ground rapidly, and he doesn't get there. Wellman, steadying mark. I want to say. Why would David needs to be out in the pocket when he's, he's the tall man option? It's strange, isn't it? It's just the position of the forward line. 
Long gives chase on Daniel Ward, who's victorious on that occasion. Back towards Wallace. Took one of the greatest marks he's ever taken in his career earlier today. That's got to be a free kick to Eston. It's not going to be paid. Long is at the back. Long is very good. Gets caught, goes over the top to Heffernan. It needs to sit nicely. It does. He's taken to the line by Liam Kelly. And we've got to throw him in the bomber's right forward pocket. So the Demons inside 50 a couple more times than the Bombers in this term. But they haven't been able to do anything on the scoreboard. Ingerson down to Lee and Chelly squeezes it out up the centre wing. Punched on by Ragoni. Wellman, Ragoni gives chase. Wellman, well done by Solomon to provide a shepherd. Good kick down the line to Heffernan. They run on now, the Bombers. Heffernan kicked a set of half forward. Disappointing result. Just been a bit sloppy, the Bombers, in the last couple of forward moves. Good kick by Collins. Into the centre. Oh, Liam Chelly gets a high one. But Mercedes did hold him up. Anthony McDonald, I should say. To Johnston. Good kick. Schwartz, outside 50. Goes back to Phoebe. Phoebe to the pocket, to Farmer. The Farmer will try and turn his man inside out, but he uh, goes to ground. Warcroft coming on for the Bombers for the first time, I think, today. Just replace Lucas there, Bruce. So Melbourne in attack. They've had their fair share of it in this term. Barnes and Swartz. Swartz at the back. Back to Swartz. He's got some space. He's a big man. He can kick a big ball. It's going and going and going. It's a goal. Post. Hit the post. Just at the last moment, it's a terrific effort. Just over six minutes remaining in the quarter. Fletcher towards Barnes and Co. on half back. Robertson, Barnes at the back. Little toe poke. Heard almost gets to the front. Blumfield was already there. Gives it away quickly to McCurry. Drifted beautifully in towards the centre. Here's a chance now for Carousella. Blake Carousella from 55. Goes for home. Goes towards Long. Can't take the mark, but he's quick to bounce up again. Grabs his teammate, brings it to the ground. The door opens for Lloyd. Lloyd onto the right boot. A high one in towards the pocket. Barnard won't get there in time. And it's over the line on number four. Interesting, just watching Barnard. Well, wanted that piece of play before. That they were the two lads ended up at Essendon after Salmon. Paul Salmon is now retired. And Darren Jarman uh, was a terrific swap all round all that, wasn't it? I think everyone's been oh. Ragoni may pay a hefty price here. Drop what he should have taken. Wellman's hand pass. Well, they've got the numbers, so it doesn't really matter. Here's Heffernan from 45 metres. Chris Heffernan goes for goal. And it's one behind. Blumfield trying to con the umpire just for a moment, but it was still in play. Johnston again. Goes wide. He's spotted his target. To Ingerson, he's outside the defence of 50. The kick to Nicholson, well weighted. He's dropped the mark. Probably should have taken it. Uze having a busier quarter. Gets around to his favourite left. The kick to half forward. Robertson's been uh, a good com competitor here with uh, Solomon this term. He's 50 out and then loads it up. Hooks it coming back. Just misses. Ian Solomon, I was trying to spit it out. They've had a pretty good duel in this quarter. Solomon, great first half. Robertson is matching him physically in this turn but still it's the Bombers by a very big margin Fletcher takes the kick out he goes to the outer side Carousella is alone sneaks clear and stabs it up towards centre wing and Barnard having plenty of the ball and he's got Ramanaskis on the outer side Adam Ramanaskis short and it's effective the Bomber machine starting to build again Mercedes short towards Moorcroft it's come unstuck they persisted with perhaps going one too many as far as the short game was concerned. And Phoebe comes away towards a right half forward. It bounces nicely for Schwartz. He's caught. He's lost it. Well, he actually broke the tackle in the end there. And he didn't take any longer than a couple of other players have been given to break the tackle or dispose of the ball today. Heard ambles towards centre wing. 
looks again towards the 50 as it's smashed towards the line. Moorcroft keeps it in play. He's just come onto the ground. Gary Moorcroft goes for goal and goes across the face of goal, failing to trouble the scorer. Gee, that's, uh, it's just got a bit sloppy, both teams there, haven't they? They've just not quite finding the targets as tight as just starts to get in. All of them now be looking for that three-quarter time break. Mercedes come off the ground and Buick on. Thanks, Diffus. So Buick on, Johnston short to Gurgic. The Demons come out. Power run down. Terrific tackle at the back coming from Heffernan. Barnes out wide to Carousella. Carousella wider still to Barnard. Barnard's floating, kicked the full forward. Lloyd nearly took a beauty. Buick waiting for it. Still with Boris. Buick's handball. Moorcroft. Moorcroft's handball not going anywhere. Gurkic has to jump over an opponent. Doesn't get anywhere. Boundary throw. Fair impression. <laughs> so 101 to 56. Just tried to hurdle the pack. That's actually a trip. Moorcroft did reach out with the hand. Still in the danger zone as far as the Demons are concerned. And uh, Buick tries to smash it back inboard. Buick and Moorcroft, fresh legs on the ground. Carousella caught at the bottom of the pack. And up by Hayden Kennedy will come in for a bounce. You have to say, Sandy, that 45 points in front. They've won the quarter, Melbourne, but they haven't gained anywhere. They're, in fact, they're four behinds, four behinds behind on scoreboard. And it's not good when you see that graphic, is it? Three minutes remaining in the quarter. 101 plays 56. Just inside the Bombers 50. Now Barnes makes sure of it. Here's a goal for Buick. And he loves that. Now they're on fire. Now they're... Gee, loves a goal, Buick, and he loved that one, didn't he? 15, 17 to 8 White wins the tap. Start of the game spectacularly. Woe Woden's kicked to half forward. Liam Chilly underneath. Toe poke by Schwartz, who's been busy in this quarter. Look away handball by Solomon was clever. To McCurry playing up the ground. Well weighted kick. Ramanowskis running onto it. Gee, he's got great orientation on the football field. He's handballed to Moorcroft at about 49 metres. Centering kick. Lloyd's a chance. Got him. Good mark. He nearly got caught in two minds, Matthew Lloyd. It looked like he was, he was thinking about going for the big sit. He had a little bit of a run-up. His opponent, Ingerson, was just a couple of metres under the ball. But in the end, he thought, no, I'll just hold his body there and take it. And it wasn't a clean one, but he held it. It's been a very interesting battle, that one. Ingerson hasn't lowered his colours. He's stuck to the task. But Matthew Lloyd's also sacrificed a bit of his game for the team playing today and has contributed in other areas as well. He's had enough of it to have kicked five or six, hasn't he? But he's, yep. he's... He hasn't been the main focus up forward. He's accepted that when Hurd's come forward, he's been the main focus, and he's done the team things all day, Matthew Luke. He's kicked a goal in each of the quarters up until now. Can he make it a third goal here in the third quarter? They like it. So Lloyd kicks three. That was about the spot he kicked his 100th goal a couple of weeks ago. And this great team is putting a space in the Demons now. Well, Bruce, I think that's one of the keys as we get closer to the end of this game, and it's hard to see Melbourne really doing anything from here. Is it going to be called the greatest team of all time? 21 wins during the season, three straight in the finals, 24 games of football won in a season. I think some people are going to start saying this is the best ever. And that is after they won the pre-season competition. Correct. It's Mark Harvey. Now, Jason, you're in one of those great teams. You've been a superseded. His Regoni as Jason ponders that. And <laughs> Come on, Jason, stick up for us, mate. <laughs> Phoebe, caught, heard, heard gets clear. 55 metres out. James goes for the doctor. It's off the side of the boot. Goes in towards the pocket. Lloyd is there, Long is there, picked up by Lloyd, gives a little ground, he wants Carousella, and he's got him, 55 out. Waste no time, Blake Carousella drifting into the pocket, he wanted Michael Long, perhaps a touch ambitious, it was a very, very tight angle, and so it'll be Travis Johnston to take the hand pass and come from full back towards the half-back line and find Leon Chelly. Up towards centre wing, close to siren time. 
as Melbourne go forward through Peter Walsh. Walsh really testing out David Neitz. It's wide. Fletcher keeps it in play. Cleverly done because the Bombers have got the numbers. Johnson goes back to Fletcher again. Little one towards Barnes and he's got it. He's on halfback. This is a superb outfit, isn't it? Mercury just saying, let's cool it. Let's steady down. We've got a fraction over a quarter of football to play. He backpedals to Barnes. The message has come out. Uh, make sure you go along the boundary, boys. Don't kick it backwards. Perhaps a little too early for that sort of thing. Barnes on half back. Goes towards uh, Barnard and Co. He got his hands to it. Uh, Ramanaskis had it spent maybe a fraction too early. Uzo almost caught underwears by the Walsh hand pass. Collins on centre wing. Tucked close to the line. Keeps it in play before it is smashed towards Farmer. His kick is partly smothered and we've got a throw in. Sheedy and Harvey, the two men who've masterminded this Essendon season, already down on the sidelines. Siren imminent as Schwartz smashes it towards the 50. Bomber fans can sense there's one quarter to play and then the floodgates will well and truly open. Kept the team to eight goals in the first three quarters. Oh, look, I think they're, they're the best tackling side I've seen. They really come at you hard and put you under pressure. And Malcolm, in answer to your statement about are they the best team, I think this is the best season we've seen from a team. I agree I'm with you. I'm not saying they're the best team, no. but I think this is the best season we've ever seen from a team. Beautifully put, Jason. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, well done, Jason. <laughs> Some great stories out there. The Bombers surely home here. An insurmountable lead over the Demons. As we start the last quarter, Jeff White might have hurt himself there, going for the ball with Johnny Barnes. McCurry comes out wide to half forward. Collins at the back. Blumfield over the ball, paddles it forward. Woe Woden started promisingly enough, but it's dried up a bit for him. Comes wide. Travis Johnston kicks to centre wing. Schwartz and Wallace. Wallace has done pretty well. And he belts it away to the line. James Hurd said this week he's the most respected player at the club. Now here's uh, what... Oh, boy. May have just had his arm whipped back against the natural motion there. You heard he said about Wallace, uh, he's had a tough time off the field, but he's the most respected player at the club. Rigoni's handball to Woe Woden. It is effective, and it allows Woe Woden to kick in towards the forward line. Oh, great Magnificent diving mark by David Neitz. He does have super hands, David Neese. I mean, that is almost like a goalkeeper in soccer. He's diving horizontally and just took it clean as a whistle. Has two goals already. One in the second, one in the third. And there's the angle that he has in front of him. Not easy from this pocket. Meets for number three. Starting it well right, and it's drifting away into the outer pocket, pushed over the line. A throw-in in the right forward pocket for Melbourne. Looks like Farmer's on the ball now there, boys. Look at this again. Just and throws himself sideways. to the limit, and that's a mighty dive and a mighty catch. From David Neitz. Farms doing the ruck work from behind. Flick down in front, and waiting there. Mark McCurry. They're solid as a rock. They're very good at peeling one bloke off, aren't they? Just to fill up that hole, and then they switch play. This is just perfect the way Essendon play footy. He gives it to Hurd. James Hurd looks towards centre wing. It passes Carousella. Blumfield is there as well. Carousella will get another crack at it. Ricochets off his knee and bounces over the line. So into the final quarter. People at this stage will be starting to think, who will win the Norm Smith medal? Malcolm, you're one of those people voting. You'll be thinking about it as Johnston gets caught by Heffernan. Heffernan dropped it like a hot potato. Regoni right in his hammer. Farmer there as well, claimed by Ramanowskis. Farmer trying to get out the back door. Blumfield, Barnes. Carousella eventually towards Barnard. 
through the weight of numbers they get it down towards Lloyd watch out because Long was lurking in that area too Lloyd gives the hand pass away they're running out of room they've run out of room he's taken over the line and we've got to throw it interesting to see Shane Wywoden and James Hurd going head to head in this quarter Neil Danaher has probably just given him the challenge of getting something out of this quarter against the best player in the competition and what about John Barnes three losses at Geelong heading for one Amazing. He finally shakes you off his back, Malcolm. Oh, hang on, hang on. Here's he had to go. Here's he had to go after me. Lloyd doing the ruck work. Walsh getting the hand pass away. Ward, Phoebe. Phoebe taken to the line by Buick. Fresh man on. He's only played a bit of the last quarter. Heard bending it in towards full forward. And the second attempt mark taken by Beams, not paid. We have got to throw in Beams asked the question, why wasn't it paid? Entitled to ask the question too, I would yep. have thought, Sandy. First time he's touched it. The youngster who came in for Cameron Bruce today. Had so much trouble early when the pressure was on with these kickouts, didn't they, the Demons? Just couldn't find a way. Phoebe to Nicholson. Good mark at the back. Quickly plays on. Puts Powell under pressure. Carousella. Doesn't waste too many. To Heffernan. Finds some space. Great kick to Long. That is just an extraordinary piece of individual work from Heffernan. I mean... To put himself in the right position to receive the handball, then to dummy around the player, accelerate through a gap, and then just to deliver to the leading long. That's a very skillful play. Michael Long from the pocket. To kick one free. To play a little cameo roll up forward. As he hooked it back, he's at the post. He's missed a couple in close today, hasn't he? One goal, four. Well, Ian Scotty Lucas between them. I've got one eight. Yeah. A number of players have brought this ball back into play for Melbourne. What the problem is, they've never had enough runners around their tall players. They've generally been one out. It's Phoebe this time. White's going to have to get his skates on to get Carousella. Johnston is caught. He almost lost it. The umpire thought about putting the whistle up to the lips and then decided against it. Farmer takes the mark. The kick is beautifully smothered by Wellman. Getting it away was McCurry. Now Barnes centering his good towards Barnard. Barnard can kick a goal. 49 metres out. He's enjoyed the goal today. And he's got another one. That's number four. Looking for a part-time job? Then have a look at this. Officially. So Barnard with four. Her keeps on getting it. It's a celebration now, isn't it? Of this Essendon football team. Oh, oh. Buick, beautiful kick to Lloyd. Every one of them are starting to get involved, aren't they? Matthew Lloyd may still have something to say about who's going to be the leading goal kicker today, but that's just a beautiful lead straight at the person delivering the ball. So Lloyd, right on the 50. 109 goals. Make that 108 goals so far this season. He's had a wonderful year. He's missed it. As uh, Plugger and Dipper told us a couple of times, it is not the easiest day to kick from a long way out. Sean Denham, who has cheered off the ground at Whitney Hill, Last night, his final training run with the Bombers, played in the 93 Premiership team. 186-game veteran. Didn't quite make it to the 200 club, but has been a fantastic player. Started with Geelong. Gee, has been good Blumfield today. And here he is now. A long way out. But as... Bruce said it's now becoming somewhat of a celebration as far as Essendon is concerned. Hurd's been very good today as well. Right, to look. see who Malcolm Blight votes for in the Norm Smith medal, Sandy. Well, I think uh, I think you're both spot on there. I mean, uh, both been very, very good. Four, almost four quarter plays, haven't they? Well, see, we're only ten minutes into the last, but almost. <laughs> well, it's, it's been a real emotional roller coaster too with James Hurd, who's had family problems with a young child, very ill. Unfortunately, that's turning out okay. This is Wellman, 65 out. Sean Wellman. Well, they're turning each other inside out there in the forward line. Longman Co. And eventually it's just taken over the line and the line can see.
suited by Uzo. They're getting so much of the ball now, the Bombers. There's a natural tendency when you get this much ball to try and involve everybody and just got to be careful not to overuse the ball. Phoebe again then. You can see uh, David Smorgan, head of the Western Bulldogs, enjoying his afternoon at the MCG. Ragoni, still at fullback, sneaks away from Long, kicks towards Jeff White, Barnes smashes it down in front, Carousella and Cole lurking dangerously there. Heffernan gets caught, pokes it out eventually. Melbourne have the numbers for the moment, but Barnard has the pace. Paul Barnard is having a field day. Kicks in towards Moorcroft and Co. And Gary Moorcroft, go Gary! And he does for his mum Judy and his dad who's been watching him from above. They're all going to be have something to talk about tonight, aren't they? They're all chipping in left, right and centre, these great Essendon players. And the margin's up to 72 points already, Bruce. The record is 96. Jason and Dipper's team uh, belted the Demons in uh, 1988. Fletcher to Wellman. It's a bit behind the play, G. Fletcher, and uh, oh! we're into it, actually. It's a kick to half forward. There's been some wild swings going on with uh, Neitz and Fletcher. Now they're still going on. Really? The ball comes back. Into the centre, Ragoni, little short one, running on Johnston. He's inside 50, he's not balanced though, he goes to ground, it's a terrible kick. And Johnston, here's a, he's had a blue starter, so... Boy, oh, oh, boy, oh, boy. A couple of air swings there, though I'm glad we're air swings. A couple missing. Is that a tip at striking? <laughs> on about four counts, man. <laughs> So Barnsley at half back. Kevin Sheedy said you've got to have a couple of cowboys around the club. Well, he did well when he got Barnsley back, didn't he? Wind holding it up by Woden to White. Hard wicking hard. White looking to give it off. Lee coming from Robertson. Hard. Go well, he, he dives, I think. I really think he took a drive. In the end, though, there was probably no need for Mark Johnson to put the body on body. The ball was already going over the top. Official attendance, by the way, is 96,249. Let's have a look. Well, so 96,249. Michael Long coming from the ground as Robertson goes for goal. And he's got it. And there's a blue on. 28 plays, 62. Barnes, Hurd, James Hurd again. Putting them inside 50. Alessio's come off the bench. Nicholson turns him inside out. But also Peter Walsh was just about twisted in two as well. Johnston gives it to Powell. They get it away once again to Uzo. He gets caught, loses to guess who? James Hurd, a floating punt kick in towards Lloyd. What sort of a kick is that one, man? Well, <laughs> he's knocked up getting the ball hurt. He's that tired, probably. He's just had a wonderful go. Yeah. He's had 27 possessions and two goals, Malcolm. He's taken it inside 50 on eight occasions. And, and he from did the it. outset, he was the favourite for the Norm Smith man. And he did it early, Jason. And Lloyd will kick for number four. To join Paul Barnard the major contributor for the Bombers. They're on the verge of collecting their 16th Premiership flag. Lloyd from 45. Kicks the goal. He's got four. They've reached that moment running long and hard with Lloyd. Her to get out of the centre. Barnard in very hard on Collins. Walsh from the back to Woden. Just hasn't had much space today. Kicks to Neitz. Free kick. Just a bit of a push, maybe, from Fletcher, yeah. So Neitz. In board to Leoncelli. Another shorty in board. To Ragoni. Ragoni. Big high ball. Now Powell's at the back here. Got him. He was lurking late.
He's drifted forward all year, hasn't he? Very successful. He's been able to get deep. He's kicked over 30 goals for a running midfielder. He's kicked a couple today. And I would suggest Justin Blumfield will get a very warm round of applause as he comes off for a So Blumfield coming off. Powell from Point Black Lanes kicks his third. So not a bad day's work for Powell. He, he hasn't had let the side down really. He's kicked three and had a fair bit of it. Very dangerous early. I mean, in the first quarter he was particularly good. This is a good leap in mark. Goal number 32 for the season for Stephen Powell. Seven's coverage of the Olympic Games beginning shortly, and there are some of the members of our Olympic swimming team with Kieran Perkins in the top left-hand corner. Hoping for gold again. Speaking of gold, there goes James Hurd. One stage was never going to play football again. Buick to full forward. Now a procession. Lloyd from point blank. Call the play on. It's called the play on. Collins defends. And they're going to at least cut this one off. I don't know why he was called to play on, but he was. Just off the boot, I think, Sandy. Liam Chelly goes to the other side and finds White. Lloyd, for the moment, denied goal number five. Lucas standing by. Give it a comeback on again. Hardwick in front. Knows only one way, and that's straight ahead. And he does towards Lloyd once more. Ricochets off his boot to Gary Moorcroft. Moorcroft gives it back to the running Hardwick. Tries to bend it back, but the only one there is Collins. Laterally towards Peter Walsh. Tucked in the back pocket. Lucas just back out on the ground. Bada! Big fly! Goes short. Finds Smoke and Joe. Mercedes 65 out. Essendon within eight and a half minutes of celebrating. Lucas could have copped a decent old shove. Well, that's interesting. The free kick's going to go the way of Melbourne. I think after he was pushed out of the contest, he grabbed a handful of jumpers, Andrew. So he picked the second one. Collins from halfback. Just going short, Uzay. Looks towards Ragoni territory, in fact, passing him. And finds Schwartz. Schwartz passes in towards Robertson. Took it on the half volley, gave it back to Ragoni. Floating punt kick in towards full forward. Topped off by Fletcher. The All Australian fullback comes out wide to another All Australian this year in Hardwick. To Ramanaskis, who was second in the Norwich Rising Star. To Hurd, their champion. At centre wing. Have a look at those stats for Hurd. Is he being held on to? Well, oh. it looks like it. Just a bit tight there, Woe Woden. What a great year he's had, but uh, it's a bitter end for the Demons today. So the Bombers are now seven minutes away from confirmed greatness, aren't they? They really are. They needed to win to confirm themselves. Having won 38 now of their last 41 games, it's a remarkable achievement over the stretch. And if any team deserved to have a premiership, it has been this one in the last couple of seasons. They have set the standard for every other team in the competition. Just like some of the other great teams of the past have. So it's centre wing. The Bombers still marching forward. Buick, who hasn't had enough of it. He'd like to get, keep getting kicks right up to the death here. Solomon. When I say not enough of it, he's been on the interchange for so long. It's also a tough one now, Bruce, because you, they've put a couple of players on that haven't played that much. Alessio's back out there. Lucas is out there. Everyone wants to be out there when the final siren goes. 
but you want to see everyone have a part of the action. It's a very difficult balance. No, you want to be there on the dais when they present the medal. That's all you don't want to do. Okay, miss, Malcolm. <laughs> Barnard's <laughs> kick partly smothered. Morkoff goes back towards Barnes, and Barnard again won't get there in time. Powell working hard, trying to get it out. McDonald is caught. Leoncelli's there as well. Can't get it away cleanly. Pushed back towards the centre. The race is on now. Uze, a quiet first half. More noticeable in the second. Down towards Schwartz. Swings around. He's got Powell running past in towards the half forward line. It's a poor kick, although luck's a fortune. His opponent slipped. Powell gets another chance. Got a call from somewhere. I don't know where. And then just put it into no man's land. Down towards Meets, who eventually gets there. Ramanaskas intercepts him. Ramanaskas will go again to the line. Kept in play somehow by Robertson, but Ramanaskas gets him. Off he goes to Neats. Neats wants Farmer. Where is the wizard? He had it. He lost it. And eventually it comes back to Powell. It's a tired Melbourne outfit now who eventually finds Schwartz. It's a tired Melbourne outfit as well. Woden goes to the bench. And Farmer will shoot for goal as Ben Beans comes back out onto the ground. He was a late inclusion into this lineup today at the expense of Cameron Bruce. Whoa, Woden's year, and what a year it has been, is over. Farmer for number three. It hasn't been the Wizards' day, but he's got his third. And once again, we talked about him earlier. You know, I mean, three goals not many opportunities no. so, i mean he hasn't had any gifted balls at all really that's his his really only gift that he's got for the day so he's battled on manfully he has tried very hard now considering the supply has been very very dry yeah but in a brilliant year malcolm he's uh, and over the stretch he only averages 2.1 goals in his career so he's done all right yeah. listen to that applause barnes is up. johnny barnes what a great story he is a fourth grand final and a first premiership going back to his original club Buick's kick wide Nicholson's got it to Collins to White inboard down low who's has got to search for it again just hasn't been his day he's worked a lot harder in the second half Buick on the up was good Solomon was terrific early. Oh! well Wallace got a little kick away, but it took him a long time to get the ball under his boot. Still with Wallace. Back to Heffernan. Carousella traps it. That's it, a win. Little handball. Solomon still running. What a good player he is. To half forward. Lucas would love a goal, wouldn't he? He's kicked to four behinds. To Solomon. Kicking boards a beauty. To Moorcroft. Long is running on. So Moorcroft from inside 50. Saw his mum Judy at the start of the match. Talking about Gary and how big this day was for him. As he brought it back, not quite. It's a behind. And there is the great one. King Richard Dick Reynolds, who has meant so much to this club, he won his three Brownlows in the 1930s. Equal by King Kevin now, Bruce. Yep. Kevin Sheedy will equal his record today as a coach at the Essendon Footy Club with a fourth premiership. Regoni brings it back. White and Nicholson are both there, so too is Alessio. <laughs> Off to Carousella, spears it in towards her! Tried to take what appeared to be almost a slip catch and was unsuccessful on that occasion. Melbourne defend towards Schwartz. He gets a cruel bounce. Cleverly done by Wallace. Just tidies up with Hardwick. Wallace will go again. He's uh, run over the interchange. We just saw James Hurd there. We know the Alan Hurd stand at Windy Hill. That will certainly be rocking tonight. It might just for the night be renamed the James Hurd stand. And Dean Wallace, of course, with that little dash last year where they didn't quite make the grand final. He'll be really enjoying this now. He's waited a long time for it, hasn't yeah. he? He has waited. And as uh, Kevin Sheedy said many times, he thought he did the wrong, right thing and must have been so did I. I mean, you go for it. Alessio towards Lucas. Good grab. 
Scotty Lucas, like Heffernan from the Western District, Lucas from Camberdown. Now Hurd again is a target, couldn't take it. Solomon and Long lurking at the back, Long's hand pass goes astray. And Melbourne through their defence will find the boundary line on the outer side. But it's almost over for Geoffrey Farmer and his teammates. It will still go down as a wonderful year. When you think of this side last year, they recorded just six wins. They finished 14th on the ladder. They lost their last nine games of the season last year in a yep. row. And we're looking a pretty ordinary conveyance when you talk about 2000. But they've turned it all around as Joe Mercedes has it on the outer side. Too far out. Mercedes will look for something on offer. Will it come from Hurd? Will it come from Lloyd? He's 60 metres out. He went the big bat. He wants yeah. the talk. Oh! Well, there was the big fly, but it wasn't from the red and black. It was from Jeffrey White. What a spectacular mark late in this match. So White in short. Ingerson's handball. Releases Collins. A bit up and under, but he wants Walsh. Carousella. Walsh has taken the mark. Lee and Shelley runs on. Rather, uh, McDonald. And then McDonald's kick to full forward. Robertson. Robertson. Oh! Almost. He's done a couple of specky things. Neats hooks it back and misses. He's had a few shots. He's had five shots for goal, Neats. Probably six one when he didn't score and he's kicked two three. Of course, ten goals Neats now. It's probably a true reflection of the season, yeah. to be honest. Johnson off. McCurry coming on. To save for the last few moments. And he might get a kick here too. Wellman, he'll spot him up now. Now he goes into Wallace. It's about that time, Bruce, when they decide well, we'll just we'll just hang on to it for a while. It's just over one minute remaining. Great moment for Sheets. Nobody deserves it more than this fella. He's been through the ups and downs 20 seasons at the one club. Lucas's kick. Solomon, part of the future of the club. Here comes Kevin. Well done, Sheeds. Kicks to half forward. And the mark taken by Ingerson. It's one of the great walks in footy, that, Bruce. Yeah, well, we've seen you do it. And, of course, uh, the legendary one from Lee Matthews back in 1990 when he broke Collingwood's drought. Good mark taken by Hardwick to Buick. Buick wide to McCurry. Is there one last goal out of this super team? Lloyd, play on call. We are almost there. You could argue forever who is the best team of all time, but as Jason said earlier, this is the best season we've ever seen. Kevin Sheedy joins Dick Reynolds as the most successful club in over 100 years at this famous club. And they have won their 16th premiership. And is there a better story than James Hurd? Well, maybe Barnsley and Wallace get close. Mighty scenes here. They did it tough last year in September. Harder than any other team missed in the island. Hopefully, his turn will come. It's with Robert Shaw, and there's a tear in the eye. Let's go down to you, Dipper. Bruce, become a good mate to you, Dean Wallace. Margie, you finally got one there, mate. You've got three losses. Just tell us about it. Come on. Okay, go and speak. <laughs> How about you, Dino, mate? That's why you play footy, mate. Stuff like this. Yeah, well done, mate. Go enjoy it. It's just a true emotion there, Bruce, isn't it? Let's go down the plugger. Yeah, we'll put one out here. Come off the bench and kick four goals. What a great feel, mate. It's the best feeling ever, plugger. I mean, we worked pretty hard for it all year. Yeah. We made a lot of challenges showing us this year. But for the boys' credit, we stood up and... Uh, Pretty proud at the moment. I mean, it, was a great, it was a great game. Get in there and enjoy it, mate. Well done. 
Just saw a great moment with Dick Reynolds, and you're seeing it now. Dick Reynolds and Kevin Shetty. Here's James Herbert Hutto. Ja thanks, Bruce. The James, sensational. Ah, it's one of the happiest moments of my life, you know. I don't know how to describe this. It's great. And the boys played so well, and I can't say much more, mate. At times when you must have doubted you'd ever get here again. Um, probably, yeah, but there's always a belief that we'd get here and win it. And, um, you know, this is much better than last time. This is the best football moment I've ever had in my life. Uh, just so we go over the same way, way mate. Oh, no, off you go, mate. Well, some legends around there, aren't they? With Lou Richards, Dick Reynolds and Ron Barassi. And Kevin Sheedy, who so bravely, I think, last year, stood there and waited for his players at three, after they put in final. They haven't sung it for a while, have they? Uh, well, they made a pact, didn't they? That they not be sung during the finals until they finish their journey. And they may sing it more than once today. And for Neil Danaher, he's... Real friendship there, just a consoling word. The master and the apprentice. Well, Sheedy's first game as a coach in a, premier, in a grand final wasn't so good in 1983 either when Hawthorne fell to the bottom. So you've got to live and learn a bit, don't you? Oh, do you ever. It tests, it tests and it tests again. And it does, particularly Malcolm, now that they sit out there and they stay and they wait for the presentation, they don't just leave the field straight away. You actually have to sit there, you work out, with the, this is really what we're missing. I mean, that hurts. That yeah. really cuts the chase, doesn't it? There's a Melbourne hierarchy. Dipper again. Yeah, Bruce, I've got Mark McCurry and Mark. What a magnificent uh, season for you. Very emotional one as well, but uh, you finally got this flag. Yeah, no, it's been excellent. Everyone's been going in the one direction and uh, commiserations to Melbourne. But, um, yeah, I mean, we were that focus this year, but um, it's just a great thrill. And a great rap there for Barnsley. Like, he's had three losses, come back to the club. It's just uh, a sound of joy there. Yeah, no, he's in tears, Barnsley, so I'm sure we'll uh, have a few drinks tonight. Good on you, Mark. Well done, mate. Stippert said for Mark McCurry, who lost his brother so tragically earlier this year. When you look through every player and every team, Bruce, every premiership team, there's nearly a story with everyone in the team. You know, Sheedy will relive all that tonight with his players, as the club will. Jason, it's just one of the great nights in footy, isn't it? Oh, it is. When you're on the winning end of one of those. Just because you've got everyone there that actually contributed to what happened throughout the year, it's something that you share amongst your close mates, your teammates and the officials around the club. Plug has got Michael Long. Yeah, I've got Michael Long here, Bruce. Well, Longy, how's it feel, mate? No, I think it's a bit of great effort all year, but um, this is the one we're really after and we really worked hard for it today. Yeah, certainly after last year, certainly a great result this year and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah, certainly well. I mean, uh, missing out last year and we really made up for it this year. And I'd like to say to um, all the Bomber supporters and my family watching the down and love it. Good on you, Longy. Have a great one, mate. Thanks, brother. Michael Long there with his second premiership, Mark Harvey. It was such a stall in the 80s there with Kevin Sheedy and has done such a great job. We'll come back to the MCG with the presentations after this, but in the end, it was the Bombers over the Demons by 10 goals. The Melbourne players, but uh, that uh, moment they play for, and Trey, look at Barnsley, balling there with Kevin Sheedy, who coached him when he started his career back in 1987, and then he went off to Geelong and played in three grand finals here and finally a premiership player well the players are waiting it's time now for the presentations and also the naming of the norm smith medalist let's go down to craig willis well ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen to put your hands together and show your appreciation for the efforts of the melbourne football club as i invite the captain david meese to the podium to say a few words Well, uh, this is the best of the football club. Just want to uh, congratulate them on a fantastic season and uh, a fantastic game today. Um, also to the AFL and uh, their major sponsor, Coca-Cola, for their support. Uh, the Melbourne Football Club have been fantastic this year and, uh, and our, our sponsors, LG, Tui's and Fila, uh, for their support, they've been great this year. Um, to our players, our coaching staff and all of our support staff. It's been a big year and um, all, the, all their efforts have been fantastic and it's a bit of, bit of pill to uh, swallow today but hopefully we can get back here and uh, give it another crack sometime in the near future. And to our fans, uh, it's a bit disappointed today obviously. 
but uh, stick with us and uh, hopefully we can uh, have some more good times in the future. Thank you very much. Commiserations to the Melbourne Football Club. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just before we make our grand final presentations, it's appropriate that today we make the presentation of the Coleman Medal, awarded to the player, of course, who kicked the most goals during the home and away season. To present the medal, please welcome back to the MCG, a man who won the Coleman Medal on four occasions. I'm going to ask the greatest goal kicker in the game, Tony Lockett, to present the Coleman Medal to Matthew Lloyd of Essendon. Can I just say to uh, first to Melbourne, thanks for a great game. But uh, to the Essendon boys, we've worked so hard for this. I reckon it's been two years of uh, hard work and we've finally got here. But uh, to, most of all, to all the supporters, you've been fantastic. You've been here all year and uh, I love your spirit. And to my parents, uh, Brett, Simon, Coley, Lisa and Mary, I owe it to you. Thanks a lot. Matthew Lloyd, Melbourne medalist. And now, thank you, Plugger. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome former Collingwood champion and Hall of Fame member Lou Richards to present the Norm Smith medal to the player adjudged best of field in the 2000 Coca-Cola Grand Final. And the winner of the Norm Smith medal in today's match is James Hurd of Essendon. bunch of blokes you could ever meet. It's my wife, Tanya, and my little baby, Stephanie. This is for you guys. Thank you. James Hurd, the Norman Smith medalist. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Hall of Fame legend and a man who is no stranger to the Premiership dais, Ronald Dalbarassi, who will be joined with Lou to present the medallions. Lou, come back, please. We need you. We're going to present the medallions to the Essendon Football Club, the Premiers for season 2000. Beginning with number one, Mark Johnson. Number two, Mark Mercury. Number six, Sean Wellman. Number seven, Dean Solomon. Number eight, Darren Buick. Number nine, Adam Ramanaskos. Number 11, Damien Hardwick. Number 13, Michael Wong. Number 14, Jason Johnson. Number 16, Paul Barnard. Number 18, Matthew Lloyd. Number 21, Dean Wallace.
Number 22, John Barnes. Number 26, Chris Everton. Number 27, Stephen Alessio. Number 29, Gary Moorcroft. Number 31, Dustin Fletcher. Number 32, Justin Blomfield. Number 33, Blake Paracella. Ladies and gentlemen, the coach of the Essendon Football Club, Kevin Sheedy. Here with Kevin, the last Ronald Dale Barassi to take hold of the 2000 Coca Cola AFL Premiership Cup. As I call upon the captain of the Essendon Football Club to join us, number five, James Hurd. Uh, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, all the fans that have followed footy uh, all of your lives. I can assure you that this team has deserved the Premiership. I've got no doubt about that. To all you Bummer fans, thanks for your loyal support. And to all the parents that produce our footballers all around Australia, thank you very much for looking after the game. Thanks a lot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the official presentation. After the photographs have been taken, we'll invite the Essendon Football Club, the Premiers, in season 2000 to do a lap of honour of the MCG. On behalf of Coca-Cola and the Australian Football League, we hope you've had a great afternoon here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. To the United team, no doubt about that. We're going for a break. We'll be back with a lap of honour right after this. Jason Dunstall with me, who's been through all this at Hawthorne on four occasions, but great scenes for the Bombers. Joy, relief, everything must go through their minds right now. All the emotions come out now, they've done the job, all the goals have been realised, everything's come to fruition, now you just sit back and you enjoy it. But it's, uh, it's a fairy tale, 12 months ago, his stocks were low, he only played two games last year, we thought we might have seen certainly the end of the best of him, but he has come back and won the Norm Smith medal today in resounding fashion. They almost did the impossible, this team. Go through a season unbeaten. They got so close. Well, that was the only thing that escaped them this year. It's just been an incredible season. I mean, everything that's been thrown at them, they've, uh, they've coped with, and they've done it with style. And uh, quite fitting that there was a, a fair margin, I think, between the two teams, because there's been a fair margin between the Bombers and everybody else this year. Yeah, I think Melbourne was the right team to play them today. They were the best second team in terms of form. They won 10 out of their last 11. Probably stiff in the match they lost, and yet today they were outclassed. They were disappointing today, Melbourne, I think. That certainly wasn't their best performance, but they'll learn from that. They'll take something out of this game, and uh, they'll figure they can go a little bit better next year. Darren Buick's wife with him there. They've been through a fair bit. 
And uh, Scotty Lucas with him, but for Darren, what a bittersweet moment, a great moment for him. Scotty Lucas, who uh, didn't have his greatest day, but he's going to have his great night tonight. But uh, Buick and Mark Johnson, who came back. We saw uh, Judy morph off at the start of the game, Gary, whose dad passed away. And uh, Judy talked about his dad looking down today with Gary. And there's James here with Tanya and Stephanie, I'm sure. Tanya is right, right now, and James remembered them when he got the Norm Smith. Well, James has gone from tears of frustration to tears of joy, hasn't he? I mean, look, it's a roller coaster ride of emotions, and the family share it with you. They all go through it. They see you when you come home disappointed, when you come home angry, and they share the joy as well, and this is a special moment for them. Yeah, his darling little daughter there, Stephanie, with him. But James Heard and Kevin Shetty, who symbolically, I think, mean so much to the Bombers, and Sheeds with his fourth premiership. There's uh, Darren Buick, who's really lapping it up at the moment, and why shouldn't he? And the Bomber fans, well, it was tough for them last year, but they've had everything to wish for this year, and everything has come true. Mark of the Year competition, we do know.